isang mapagpalang araw. Happy Wednesday, future Isko and Iska. Today is November 24, 2021 and hashtag Team LRC is back for the second day of the Nowhere to Go But Up or UP 2.0 webinar series. Kumusta po kayo? Sana nakapag-almusal na po ha. We do hope nakapag-breakfast na para naman handang-handa na tayo para sa ating session ngayong umaga. Also, please let us know where you are watching right now and from what school po kayo. Comment down below sa ating comment section. And of course, shout out sa ating mga always ready na mga early birds. Sila Kali Janroy, Joseph Hermitano, Cheryl May Makaraig, Marvi Repuyan, Kuya A.B. Riano, Sir Brian Carlo Hipolito, Andes Hia, and Joella Geriba. Good morning, good morning, and happy watching this morning. So today is the second day of our webinar series at syempre kung meron kayong mga katanungan sa UP College Admission Process, Scholarships, Financial Assistance, aba, nako para sa iyo ang araw na ito, ihanda na ang inyong mga papel at ballpen para makapag-take down notes kayo ha. At syempre, huwag kalimutang i-share itong video or itong ating video para mas marami pa ang matuto at ma-inspire sa umagang ito. At kung wala pa dito ang inyong mga friendships, mga kaibigan at kaklase, aba, tawagin na natin sila kung tulog pa, gisingin na natin sila at itag na natin sila dito sa ating FB Live. As of today, we already have a total of 366 registered participants. I hope... On board na po tayong lahat. Time check, it's 9.04 in the morning. Welcome to Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0, UPLB Recruitment Program for the Best and the Brightest. My name is Cheryl Hermosa Ebron, University Extension Associate and RPDB Coordinator of UPLB Learning Resource Center. And once again, yours truly po will be the moderator for this morning. Just a few friendly reminders for our webinar first. Please always keep your comments helpful and considerate to the resource persons, moderator, and to your fellow participants. Second, if you have questions, feel free to comment down below on our comment section. Po, ah, but, but please make sure that they are relevant to our topics today. And lastly, please do not forget to answer the evaluation form after the webinar. Our team will deeply appreciate for your comments and suggestions. The deadline of submission of responses will be until 1 p.m. tomorrow. So wag pong kalimutan na magsagot. And of course, yung mga hindi po makakapanood this morning dahil may mga klase or may mga kasabay na ganap, don't worry po. You can always watch the replay of our sessions through our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. And once again po, salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong walang sawang suporta at pagtangkilik sa UPLB Learning Resource Center. Our Facebook community po is still growing strong. We now have uh, almost 85,000 strong followers. And on our YouTube channel naman po, meron na po tayong 2,300 strong subscribers. We are always grateful and humbled for your continuous support and trust 
to hashtag Team LRC. So together, let's continue to build, inspire, and support one another. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Para naman po mas mabilis nating makita lahat ng ating resources for this webinar series, please use our official hashtag, which is hashtag nowhere to go but up and hashtag LRCRPBD. Ayan! Para naman talagang magising tayo at mabuhayan sa umagang ito, ano, bago ang ating mga sessions, mag-energizer muna tayo. At syempre, may prizes po tayo para dyan. Courtesy po ng Team LRC at uh, syempre ng aming incoming director, Sir J.M. Mbate. Sa so, mga suki na po namin, ha, alam niyo na po ang gagawin, go to www.menti.com And then use the code that you are seeing on your screen, which is 5305662. Ayan. So, pwede nyo din pong iscan yung QR code para po diretsyo na po kayong makapunta dun sa ating Mentimeter. Alright? So, once again, the winner will be receiving a prize uh, from Team LRC. Now, let me just share my screen so that we can see the questions for this morning. And we're waiting for our players. You should have. You should look at your phones. Ha, mga habol hanggang ten. On <laughs> ready. Okay, answer fast to get more points. The first question is: UP Los Banos is located at the foot of the legendary mountain called Blanc. Is it Mariang Banga, Mount Maria Makiling, Mariang Delisay, or Mount Banahaw? Ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Five, four, three, two, and one. Times up. Tingnan po natin ang mga nakinig kahapon. Alright. 12 po ang nakatama. Si Mount Maria Makiling. O ba diba? Ang aming talagang uh, magandang um, tawag dito. It's, um, uh, it's actually a volcano as well, pero dormant po siya. So, Mount Maria Makiling. UPLB is found at the foot of the legendary mount, uh, legendary mountain called Mount Maria Makiling. Alright. Thank you very much. Uh, naka- Sagot, <laughs> hindi po Mariang Banga, hindi Mariang Dalisa, hindi Mount Banao, but Mount Maria Makiling. Alright, tingnan lang natin kung sino ang nauna sa ating leaderboard. Alright, sino kaya? Last time si Josh yung nanalo. Alright, ang fastest natin for the question number one is si Edward. Congratulations, Edward. Alright, let's now proceed to the second question. Second to the last, uh, actually second and last question. Question number two. Answer fast to get more points. Look at your phone as well. Aside from the three pioneering colleges, what were the other courses fe featured on day one of LRC RPBB? Alin kaya dyan sa, sa tatlong yan? Or sa apat na, na choices na yan? BS Human Ecology, BS Nutrition, BS Statistics, or all of the above? Tingnan natin ang mga nakinig kahapon. Time's up. The correct answer is... All of the above. So aside from BS Agriculture, BS Forestry, and Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, we also featured BS Human Ecology, BS Nutrition, and BS Statistics. And we learned a lot uh, from our guest speakers, resource speakers, and how these courses are very relevant and significant nowadays that we are facing a global pandemic and a global crisis. So kung nalilito ko pa kung anong course ang pipiliin mo, Ayan, meron ka ng anim na pagpipilian. And a lot more no sa, sa UPLB. Alright, tingnan po natin kung sino ang nanalo sa ating energizer for this morning. Sino kaya ang makakareceive ng cash prize? Tan -tan -tan -tan. Si Junji. Ayan, congratulations Junji. Ikaw po ang nanalo. I-PM mo lamang po kami ng inyong ang iyong GCash number para po mapadala namin sa iyo ang iyong premyo. Once again, thank you very much everyone for participating sa ating Energizer. I hope energized na kayo at ready ready na kayo para sa ating session for this morning. Okay? For our, now let's move forward to the session one or sa first session of for today. 
for our first part of our session three entitled UPQT, Know More About UP College Admission Process, allow me to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. We are very blessed po that despite his very busy schedule, talagang nakasama po natin siya for this webinar series. So, he teaches at the undergraduate and graduate degree programs of the School of Statistics, UP Diliman. He started his career at the academy and eventually expanded into the applications of statistics in other disciplines. His interests are in statistical process control, spatial statistics, and biostatistics. As a senior statistic consultant for business solution providers, he was instrumental in the success of analytics projects among clients like YGC Group, BPI, and Del Monte Philippines Incorporated, among others. He is currently an advisor for data analytics in a leading energy company in the Philippines. He also taught as lecturer in the MBA program of UP College of Business Administration, now the Cesar Virata School of Business, MS Geomatics Engineering, Digital Image and Spatial Data Analysis for Remote Sensing at the UP Diliman College of Engineering, the MBA and MS Computational Finance Programs of DLSE Graduate School of Business, both in Taft and RCBC Plaza campuses, the MA Communication Program of Ateneo de Manila University and the BS Commerce Major in Economics Program of St. Scholastica's College, Manila. Likewise, our speaker is a published acad academic. He is a member of Phi Kappa Phi and Phi Gamma Mu International Honor Societies for Academic Excellence. He was director for undergraduate studies at the School of Statistics, UP Diliman. The School of Statistics is a center of excellence in statistics in the Philippines. Its Bachelor of Science in Statistics program is accredited by the Asian University Network or AUN. Our speaker is the grand champion of the 2017 SAS Philippine Analytics Competition Faculty Division. He was also awarded the Sun Life Brilliance Professional Chair for Statistics in December 2017, the UP Centennial Professional, Professorial Chair rather, in 2020, and the Angeles Buenaventura Professorial, Professorial Chair in Statistics in 2021. He was awarded the Gawad Chancellor sa Natatanging Guru 2020, the highest recognition given to a faculty member in UP Diliman. He was also appointed the director of the Office of Admissions for the UP System Effective July 1, 2020. Dear friends, it's an honor to introduce to you in the Zoom space, Professor Francisco N. Los Reyes. Sir Kiko, good morning. Magandang umaga, magandang umaga sa lahat. Doon sa mga kagigising pa lang, tayo agad. <laughs> tayo agad. This is very interesting for you dahil ipapakilala namin ang Universidad ng Pilipinas sa inyo. Um, being in UP is an aspiration uh, for most, no? for most uh, students who dream of the best education this country can offer. So I'm very delighted that um, the UPLDLRC invited me to speak before you uh, dahil sa opisina namin sa Office of Admissions, um, mithi talaga namin na sana lahat ay makapasok, di ba? Pero katulad ng tema ng ating um, webinar, we are seeking the best and the brightest, right? Pero ipapaliwanag ko naman kung paano ang admission process sa University of the Philippines. So please allow me to share my material and uh, katulad ng, ng sinabi ni Ate Shea kanina, uh, makinig tayo at mag take down ng notes and I am welcome I, I am welcoming um, questions na from you kasi itong aking um, material ay mga talking points lamang at mahalaga na marinig ko rin yung mga tanong ninyo at sa loobin or baka nangangailangan kayo ng tulong regarding your application sa UP. Okay. So ipinakikilala ang Universidad ng Pilipinas and I am here to speak about the admission process into the University of the Philippines. Sa kaalaman ng lahat, ang UP ay may walong constituent universities. 
Ito ay ang UP Diliman na merong extension program sa UP Pampanga. And it also has the UP BGC, Bonifacio Global, Global City Professor, uh, Professional Schools. These, um, uh, these three campuses, yung Diliman, yung Pampanga, at saka yung UP BGC, they constitute the UP Diliman. Okay? Uh, ang laman ng extension program ay meron siyang undergraduate uh, courses, um, tawag dito, degree program offerings, at saka sa BGC naman ay wala siyang undergraduate degree offering. Ang laman ng BGC ay Juris Doctor. Ito ay yung pag-aaral ng batas, yung dating Bachelor of Laws, um, MBA program, at yung in-offer ng UP School of Statistics, yung Professional Master in Data Science Analytics. So ito, uh, silang lahat ay uh, kabilang sa uh, post-baccalaureate. No? So dalawang master's degrees at saka isang uh, juris doctor. Okay? Yung pangalawang university naman ay ang UP Baguio. Ang ikatlo, ang ating host ngayon, ang UP Los Banyos. Ang ikaapat ay ang UP Manila with schools of health sciences in Tarlac, Baler, Palo, in Leyte, and Coronadal. UP Visayas um, is uh, composed of the campuses in UP Iloilo City proper and in Miyagao, a very scenic uh, campus, and UP Tacloban in Leyte. We have UP Cebu, which is a separate entity. It has its own chancellor, no? separate sila sa UP Visayas. Tapos meron tayong UP Mindanao sa Mintal, uh, Davao. And then ang ating digital university, ang ating uh, sangay ng universidad na sanay na sa remote uh, learning at uh, sa distance learning at remote um, uh, mode. No? Hindi pa man nagkakaroon ng pandemya ang UP ay meron ng experience sa pagbibigay o pag-deliver ng mga kurso sa online space. Ang Open University ay mayroong offering na dalawang degree programs, fully online, trimester, at sa matapos ang apat na taon, no, ikaw ay tatanggap na ng iyong bachelor's degree mula sa UP. So ano-ano yung mga degree programs? Uh, ano yung mga characteristics nila? Sa UP, narito ang pinakamaraming koleksyon ng undergraduate degree programs. Meron tayong 175 na pagpipili ang kurso across the UP system. Nakakalat ito sa sampung iba-ibang campuses, no? So, walong universities pero 10 different campuses, hindi pa bilang diyan yung mga satellites, no? Some courses are offered in more than one campus, halimbawa ay ang computer science at ang statistics. Ang iba naman ay sa isang campus lamang, katulad ng business administration and accountancy forestry, di ba? dental medicine, veterinary medicine, isang campus lamang ito. Some courses require additional qualifications. So some um, at some point where, when you are already qualified, you will be notified by the Office of Admissions or by the degree program itself for you to submit additional requirements. So uh, ito nakaraang taon, um, halimbawa lamang ang UP Dentistry, meron silang uh, manual dexterity test. No? So me merong um, ipapagawa sa inyo para malaman kung gaano kaganda yung inyong manual dexterity kasi magiging dentista. Eh. Diba? So in some other degree programs, medyo marami ito, hindi ko kaya sa banggitin ngayong araw, pero malalaman naman ninyo kung kailangan ninyong magbigay ng mga additional requirements para sa inyong admission sa degree program na yan. Hello po, Sir Kiko. Apologies po to interrupt. Pa-share lang po, Sir, ng ating screen para po... Ay, sorry! Apo. Thank you so hindi much, na, Sir. Ano, hindi na... Nag-screen share ako kanina. Wait, ha? Thank you, Sir. Ayan. There you go, sir. Sorry, sorry. Thank you so much, Pa. Mm -hmm. Yan. So, ito yung um, aking discussion point kanina. Uh, wag mag-alala, ito pa lang naman ang una kong slide. <laughs> so, uh, ang ibang academic programs natin ay yung mga associate degree programs. Dati, ang tawag dito ay mga certificate courses. Na? 
So, ano ba yung mga associate degree programs? These are programs which do not qualify as baccalaureate, hindi uh, mga four-year courses. No? So, karamihan sa kanila ay two years lamang um, na kinukuha. Ang kagandahan sa associate degree program ay pwede itong magamit as ladder towards a ba uh, baccalaureate degree program. Kar karaniwan sa mga associate degree programs ay hindi kailangan dumaan sa UPCAT. No, hindi nila kailangan mag-apply for the UP College admission. Uh, Mag-a-apply sila diretso doon sa unit kung saan offered yung associate degree. Tapos dalawang taon ang pag-aaral. Kapag maganda ang grado, maganda ang performance, pwede mag-qualify at ituloy sa bachelor's degree. Tapos kapag um, maganda pa rin ang per performance, maaari pang ituloy sa mas mataas pang degree program. Ang lagi kong ginagamit na example ay yung Associate in Sports Science. Kapag ito, ito ay two, year, two years lamang, tapos pag, natapo, pag nagtapos ka dito at maganda ang iyong academic performance, pwede mo siyang ituloy sa Bachelor of Sports Science. At kapag maganda pa rin ang iyong performance, mataas ang grado, maaring gamitin as a vehicle towards enrollment in the Doctor of Medicine program at the UP College of Medicine. So, um, kung, kung hindi pala rin na mag-qualify through the UP College admission, that usual route, we offer the associate degree. So, wag, wag tayong agad mabawasan ng, ng loob. No? Pwede pa rin tayong makapasok sa UP through the associate degree programs. Basahin lamang ang mga Uh, information sa UP website at sa general information bulletin na laman ng ating portal. Ang pangalawa ay Juris Doctor. Ito ay offered sa UP Diliman. Uh, meron sa main campus sa uh, Quezon City at meron sa uh, BGC. At ngayon, bagong-bago, ito ay may extension na sa UP Visayas, sa Iloilo. Then we have the very popular Doctor of Medicine in UP Manila. Dalawa ang ruta para makapasok sa Doctor of Medicine. Number one is Intermed and the second one is the regular intake. Ano yung Intermed? For those of you who have opened the online portal, there's a box there that says, are you interested in the accelerated no? and integrated arts and medicine program? Yan yung Intermed. Pitong taon ng pag-aaral pero leading na siya sa Doctor of Medicine. So parang di ba yung usual is apat na taon at least ng pre-med and then you take four more years of med proper. Sa intermed, pinagsama na yon pero pitong taon na lang. Uh, mataas ang competition, ang competition sa intermed kasi doon sa lahat ng mga nag-tick ng box on intermed, we rank them tapos we give the names to the UP College of Medicine. The UP College of Medicine has its own admission policy. And kapag uh, based on their um, assessment, pwede ka nilang tawagan or sulatan or i-email inviting you to an interview. Okay? So pag na-interview ka, ibig sabihin sa UP College of Medicine ay na-shortlist ka. And then if you did well in the, in the interview pro portion, you have a high chance of being accepted. 40 people lamang ang qualified sa intermed. 40, apat na po. 20 males and 20 females. Na? So sila ang uh, cream of the crop, ika nga, when it comes to interest in pursuing medicine from the UP College admission. Okay? So ma mabigat ang competition sa intermed. Yung regular intake, ito yung tinatanggap ng university, yung mga nagtapos na ng kanilang baccalaureate courses, uh, yun yung kanilang pre-med, at mag a apply ni sila sa regular na, na medicine uh, program. No? So yun yung regular four-year medicine program natin. Regular intake ang tawag natin doon. So ano-ano yung mga undergraduate degree programs? Isa-isahin natin, no? pero syempre dahil um, marami pang uh, limitado lang oras, mabanggitin ko na lamang yung mga yung mga campuses at kung ilan. No? Para tingnan nyo na lang sa screen kung ano-ano yung mga courses na available doon sa bawat um, um, campus. Sa UP Baguio, 11 courses yan. No? So, nasa screen ngayon yung mga pagpipilian ninyo. Ang social sciences ay mayroong tatlong areas of concentration. Um, ang degree ninyo ay BA Social Sciences. Yun ang degree. 
Tapos, etong tatlo na nakikita niyo sa screen, yan po ang inyong area of concentration. Pipili lamang kayo ng isa diyan. Right? So, for the rest, no? yan na mismo yung inyong degree and major. Pero for social sciences, you need to choose one of the three uh, listed no? in the areas of concentration. Ang UP Diliman, merong 67 degree programs. No? Napakalawak ng, ng mga uh, ng koleksyon ng mga kurso sa UP Diliman. No? Um, ito, itong listahang ito ay nasa GIB, nasa General Information Bulletin sa ating portal at doon sa mga nakapag-log on na makikita nyo itong course list na ito nakalagay sa, sa portal natin. No? So just review them. Ang medyo na, na, kar, karaniwang nalilito ay yung psychology. Dalawa ang psychology sa UP Diliman ha. Meron tayong BA Psychology at BS Psychology. Be very careful. Magkaiba yung kursong yan. BA Psych at saka BS Psych. Okay? Another thing that I would like to emphasize is for um, English Studies, no? meron tayong um, Bachelor of Arts in English Studies, kailangan kang pumili kung ikaw ay pupunta sa literature. Nasaan na yun? English Studies. Kung ikaw ay pupunta sa, sa lang, literature or sa language. So dalawa yung pagpipilian sa um, um, English Studies you have to tell us upon qualification upon qualifying you have to tell the university that you wish to pursue the language track and the or the literature track ang extension program in pampanga has three offerings ba applied psych bs business management at saka ba business economics ang up manila ay merong labing walong degree programs being offered at ito ay nakalista sa dalawang slides sa sumusunod. Pero ang gusto kong i-focus dito ay yung return service agreement. Ang return service agreement ay isang kontrata na pipirmahan ninyo with the university. Ano yon? Ang ibig sabihin ng RSA, return service agreement, ay simply put, in the next five years after graduation from UP, you need to give back to the country for at least two years. So sa susunod na limang taon, pagkatapos magtapos sa university, dapat meron kang dalawang taon at least na service to the country. Ano yung mga servisyong yan? Preferably, yung tatlong trusts ng University of the Philippines, which are number one, teaching. Pwede kang magturo sa Pilipinas. Dito sa Pilipinas, magiging guro ka. Pangalawa, ikaw ay magiging researcher. Okay? At pangatlo, ikaw ay involved sa extension or service at kasama dito yung practice of profession. So kunwari ah, nagtapos ka ng physical therapy no? so pwede ka magturo sa Pilipinas pwedeng hindi physical therapy ang ituro mo pero related sa physical therapy pwede ka maging biology teacher di ba? baka napili mo maging biology teacher tapos pwede ka rin mag, mag, ah, gumawa ng research at pwede ka rin mag practice ng profession bilang isang PT isang physical therapist sa Pilipinas Hindi rin naman kailangan na nasa University of the Philippines ka magtatrabaho anywhere in the Philippines. Uh, doon sa mga mag-a-apply ng DOST scholarship, basahin ninyo ang kontrata ng DOST scholarship ninyo dahil ito ay meron ding requirement, di ba? So, tingnan ninyo kung ano yung pwede ninyong pagsamahin na na return service ninyo for DOST at the same time RSA na rin ninyo para sa UP. Pwede ninyong aralin yon at pumili ng isang path that will uh, correspond to to these requirements from the OST and the RSA. So kung disidido po tayo na mag-aral sa UP Manila, isipin natin maigi ah, kaya ba nating magbigay ng pagbabalik no? <laughs> sa bayan kasi binayaran ng bayan ang inyong pag-aaral. At yung mga kolehiyong ito ang ang nag uh, nagre-require ng RSA, ng return service yung Allied Medical Professions. Yan yung mga PT, occupational therapy, speech path, yan. Dentistry, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, public health, and the School of Health Sciences. Lahat yan ay merong return service agreement. Kontrata po iyan. Okay? So, ito rin yung uh, pangalawang slide na mga kurso na offered sa UP Manila. Sa UP Los Baños, meron tayong 29. 
no? So uh, siguro mamaya ibabanggitin na ito ni uh, ng ating university registrar pero uh, tingnan niyo na lamang sa screen yung mga yung nakalista no. I have three slides uh, of the offerings in UP Los Banos. Yan. Ang UP Cebu ay merong uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. Ay 10 na pala, sorry. Kasi binibilang kasi uh, tama siya pa rin kasi fine arts. Um, political science, psychology, biology, management, mathematics, com sci, fine arts, communication and statistics. Tama no? So yung fine arts, meron lang dalawang areas of concentration, yan yung product design at saka studio arts. So bagong ang, ang pinakabago nating kurso ay BS Statistics sa UP Cebu. Last year ang pinakabago ay yung ating Mechanical Engineering sa UP Los Baños. Ha? Sa UP Visayas in Iloilo, ito yung listahan ng mga kurso. Meron siyang Business Administration, ang major ay Marketing. Ang business administration to the demand, wala talaga siyang major, general siya. Dito sa UP Iloilo, marketing ang kanyang uh, concentration. Okay. At ito yung pangalawa dun sa listahan ng mga kurso sa UP Visayas. Sa UP Tacloban naman, uh, meron tayong walo. No? Ang social sciences ay focus sa political science. Sa UP Mindanao, we have nine. Ang kanilang BA English ay focus on creative writing. So sa ibang sa ibang um, campuses, or like sa Diliman, hiwala yung creative writing sa English. Uh, ang English sa Diliman ay literature at saka or language. Sa UP Open University, we have the best and the BAMs. No? So yung best is the Bachelor of Educational Studies at yung BA Multimedia Studies. Uh, very interesting to kasi ang dami nang pumapasok dito sa dalawang kursong ito. Mas, mas sikat dito yung BA Multimedia Studies. Eh, no? So um, nakakonsentrate kasi sa digital media. Uh, po, at nabanggit ko na kanina, four years ito, trimester, fully online. So kung, kung ikaw ay uh, malayo or pwedeng malayo sa Pilipinas at gusto mo talaga mag-aral sa UP, pwede mong um, applyan itong uh, online na uh, degree programs na ito, itong dalawa. So admission into UP, the main route is uh, the UP College Admission Test. In 2021, the University Councils of UP, the eight University Councils in UP, uh, decided to suspend the test component. Now, please wait for the official announce, announcement for 2022. However, tapos na yung mga meetings ng mga university councils. Alam na namin yung decision, pero we will wait for the OVPAA to formally announce. No, ayokong pangunahan. Pero nagtapos na, may decision na, ilalabas na lamang. Pangalawa is scholar ng bayan law. What is the scholar ng bayan law? Mayroong isang batas na nagsasabi na kung ikaw ay nasa top 10 ng isang public high school, no? pwede ka mag-apply sa UP for admission ng hindi kukuha ng test. Right? Tapos, uh, ang tawag dito ay yung INB admission. Ngayon, merong technicality. Uh, totoo lamang ito sa first five years ng batas. Laps na yon. Tapos na yung first five years na yon. So ngayon, lahat na mag-apply na scholar ng bayan, kailangan mag-submit ng application form sa UP. Tapos, kung hindi mo nakuha yung kurso na desired mo, alimbawa, hindi ka nag-qualify, pero yung UPG mo ay enough para mag-qualify sa general cut-off ng university, sumulat lamang sa Office of Scholarship and Financial Assistance under the OVPAA at sabihin niyo na you are seeking admission through the scholar ng bayan law dahil kayo ay nasa top 10 ng isang public school at ang inyong UPG ay pumasok naman sa general cut off. Okay? So, uh, ang ano lang po ang ang uh, dapat namin ipaalam sa inyo is mag-a-apply lamang kayo sa kurso na sa campus kung saan naroon yung inyong high school. So, kung nag high school ka sa Calabar Zone, doon ka lamang makaka-qualify for INB, Scholar ng Bayan Admission sa UPLB. No? Kasi ay yun sa batas, kailangan yung high school na kung saan ka nag-aral, doon din yung UP unit sa rehiyon na yon 
kung saan ka, dun sa state U pala, sorry, not necessarily UP unit. Pero sa atin, sa kaso natin, since UP units ang pinag-uusapan natin, yung UP campus na gusto mong um, pag-applyan ay doon din yung rehiyon ng iyong school. So dapat taga Calabarzon para makapag-invoke ng INB admission for UPLB. Similarly with the other campuses, di ba? So halimbawa kung UP Baguio, dapat taga Cordillera Administrative Region, di ba? Tapos pag pag uh, sa sa UP Mindanao dapat taga Davao Region, right? So kung kung sa UP Tacloban dapat taga Eastern Visayas. Kapag UP Iloilo dapat taga Western Visayas. So ganun yung requirement ng INB. So sa inyo, na ba kami nanonood ngayon na nasa top 10 at pagdating na resulta ng UPCA ay hindi kayo nakapasok, non-qualifier kayo, pero ang UPG nyo ay pasok naman doon sa general cut-off, pwede po itong scholar ng bayan. Pangatlo, yung automatic admission. Ito ay para lamang sa mga, sa mga estudyante na hindi located ang eskwelahan nila sa Pilipinas. Okay? So automatic admission is the SAT, the International Baccalaureate, the GCE, the GSCE, and some other international qualifications. So kung merong, uh, if there is uh, someone here in the audience who's studying abroad, because we are streamed uh, all over, diba? maybe some of you are studying abroad and your school is not following the depth ed curriculum, uh, you may opt to apply for automatic admission via the following qualifications. The next is the certificate program. Yan yung mga uh, sinabanggit ko kanina na associate degrees. Uh, typically, merong talent test, merong portfolio na sinasubmit, etc. Then, we have, for those with impeccable uh, sports talent, we have the varsity athletic um, admission system no? or the varsity athlete admission system. So, mga merong sports talent, pwede po kayong sumulat sa College of Human Kinetics sa UP Diliman uh, para mag-apply for tryouts. Siyempre, kailangan pa rin mag-upcut. No? Pero um, kapag nakapasok sa general cut-off, 2.800 ang ating general cut-off sa UP for the admission, yan yung UPG. Uh, kapag nakapasok kayo doon, maaari kayo mag-apply for BAAS admission. Okay? So ano-ano yung mga sports na yun? O ano yung mga events na yun? Lahat ng sports na nasa UAAP at kasama na rin sa BAAS yung Filipiniana Dance Troupe. So kung may talento sa pagsayaw at meron kayong interest na sumali sa UP Filipiniana Dance Troupe, pwede rin kayong makapasok sa UP through the BAAS program. And then we have the transfer from other college or university. Kung sakaling nakapag-aral na sa ibang paaralan, ibang universidad, maari namang lumipat sa UP. So mag kailangan lamang makatapos ng 33 academic units at merong mataas na grado. Nabasahin na yung sa website kung ano yung quote and quote mataas na, na grado. No, there is a cut off for uh, transfer into the university. Mabigyan ko lang kaya ng konting historical uh, perspective kung ilan yung qualifying rate ng UP. Napakarami ng aplikante sa UP. No? Ngayon, hindi pa tapos. No? Isang linggo bago magtapos ang application, alam nyo ba na nasa 137,000 na ang applicants natin. 137,000 high school students ang aspiring to enter the university. Noong 2021, 100,292 lamang. Grabe no, 37% ang increase mula last year hanggang sa taong ito. At parang naba, parang kakaiba yung rate of increase kasi in 2020, uh, 92,567 lamang, noong 2019, 90,426 lamang, noong 2018, 76,935. Ngayon 137 na siya. Uh, pero on one hand, uh, Parang ambigat para sa Office of Admission, pero on the other, we're happy that many are interested to enter the university. We have more, we have a wider field to recruit from the best and the brightest. Okay? So parang ang, in the last three years, nasa 14% or 13.6 to 13.8 ang qualifying rate ng, uh, sa ang application sa, sa UP. Ano yung eligibility requirements natin? Dapat ikaw ay graduating senior high school student. No? Pwedeng graduate ka na. 
Pero karamihan sa inyo ay graduating, nasa grade 12 ngayon. Kung kung um, nag, nag-log on na kayo, ma, ma, makikita ninyo na kailangan ninyong isubmit ang inyong grade 8, 9, 10, and 11 grades sa inyong permanent school record. Tapos dun sa mga nagtapos na ng high school, pwede pa rin kayo mag-apply pero dapat hindi pa kayo nag enroll sa college. So must not have enrolled in college previously and must, must not have taken college courses prior to the application for admission. Okay? Tapos wala pong minimum grade required for application into the university. It's heartbreaking when we hear reports that there are schools who uh, inhibit their students to apply to UP simply because they have grades lower than 85. It doesn't follow po. So um, wala kaming siniset na minimum grade. No? Kung, kung ito ay sinasabi ng paaralan sa inyo, ito ay hindi sinasabi ng UP sa kanila. Wala, as policy of the university, there is no minimum grade required for application into the university. Ano yung mga application requirements? You need to have your ID pictures taken, but this should be in digital form. It will be uploaded in the Form 1 portal. Then you need to fill out Form 1, the personal data sheet. Then we have Forms 2A and B. Yung 2A, ang inyong paaralan ang sumasagot nito. Nung kayo ay mag-log on or doon sa mga mag-log on pa lang, once you, you log on, you sign up. Once you sign up, uh, we trigger an email to your school. That email requests the school to provide you with a digital copy of your school record and to give UP a hard copy, no? a certified true copy of your school record. You will be required to fill out the grades part of the portal and then we will validate that through that document that we receive in the office. Kaya dalawa yung form Kaya forms 2A and B. So parang yung 2A para sa paaralan, yung 2B kayo mismo yung mag-fill out ng grades ninyo sa portal. Then um, later on, no, so mga, sa mga hihinga namin, official transcript of records, form 137, dun sa mga nagtapos na sa high school, uh, o kaya dun sa mga magta-transfer, yan. Tapos we have government recognition of the school. Kasi meron tayong experiences na may mga eskwelahan na hindi pala nila na-renew ang kanilang government recognition. So nag operate sila ng walang government uh, um, tawag dito, approval. And then we, need, we also need from your school the DepEd certification for senior high school. That means uh, it's a certification from DepEd that your school is able to offer the tracks no? and the specific strands in those tracks. Right? So, uh, kung ano yung track na um, sa senior high na offered ng high school ninyo, may certification yun from DepEd, your school will provide that to us, hindi naman kayo. And then, wala pong bayad ang application form uh, at wala rin bayad ang application. No? Sa totoo lang, ang application fee ay 450 pesos. Kapag kayo ay nagta- natapos na ninyo lahat, no? after November 30, we will give you the the acknowledgement receipt and the acknowledgement receipt states that the upcut fee is 450 pesos less subsidy 450 pesos total amount due 0 0.00 ibig sabihin binayaran na ng taong bayan ang inyong application sa UP so ang taong bayan ang nagbayad ng application ninyo okay so habang nag apply pa lang, meron na tayong utang na loob sa taong bayan. Kaya dapat pag nagtapos sa UP, ibabalik-balik tayo na? sa Pilipinas o ibabalik natin sa Pilipinas lahat ng pinagpaaral sa atin. Ang portal ay ganito ang itsura. Na? So uh, do doon sa mga nakapag-log uh, on na, familiar sa inyo, itong portal natin for those who are yet to log on, ganito yung bubulaga sa inyo. So you need to sign up and then later on log log in no so pag pwede niyo balik-balikan yung mga uh, entries doon sa portal um just some reminders please use your personal email address not the school email bakit po kasi maraming may experience kami last year na maraming schools purge the the email addresses of their students who have graduated already eh may mga communication pa kaming ipapadala sa inyo after qualification eh so minsan nagbabounce a lot a lot of um, times puro bounce email kasi 
yung pala purge na yung email address na nagamit ninyo during application. So we suggest you use your personal email account para that will be your your our way of reaching out to you after the the um, formal application process. Kasi marami rin kami pinapadalang announcements, advice, notification, um, kahit tapos na yung application. Lalo-lalo na dun sa mga uh, uh, pending cases, di ba kailangan naming um, i-follow up sa inyo yung mga dokumento like if you are part of the Indigenous Peoples Group, kailangan natin yung, yung certification from the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples uh, through email namin iyon um, pinafollow up sa inyo. Okay? So please use your personal email, not your school-related email. And then be careful in selecting your school name. Ang daming mga eskwelahan sa Pilipinas na pare-pareho. We have uh, 5,000 schools in our database. At marami dyan common yung name. Malimbawa, St. John Academy. Ang dami-dami nun. Okay? So if if your school is ano if your school is quite unique in name, di ba? Madaling hanapin yon. Pero if if the school name is uh, quite common, minsan magkakadikit sila don. Hanapin niyo talaga yung ano yung school niyo. Kasi it it makes a difference, no? Be careful in selecting your school. Uh, check, check, and check the entries upon sign up. Uh, yung simpleng typo error, no? Ng 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 nick ng name niyo would have implication in your application the misspelled uh, email address of your school, ang laking problema kasi we cannot trigger the email to them. So you cannot proceed with your application kasi wala kayong receive na grades, di ba? Kasi mali yung email address na ibinigay. So make sure that the email address of the school is valid and current. Minsan, tama naman, pero yung pala nagbago yung school. So be aware. Um, um, reach out to your school. Uh, check if the email is still valid. Baka kasi nagbago na sila. Kasi maraming paralan ang nagbabago ng email. So, isa yan sa dahilan kung bakit nagbabounce yung mga email at hindi kayo makaproceed kasi hindi na-receive ng school ninyo yung instructions namin. Then, do not create multiple accounts. They can result in delays of acknowledgement receipt. So, if there are errors at nalaman nyo na lang later na nag-commit kayo ng error, please email the UP Office of Admissions. The email address is dataproc, parang data processing, dataproc, D-A-T-A-P-R-O-C dot OADMS, Office of Admissions yan, OADMS at up.edu.ph. I repeat, dataproc.oadms at up.edu.ph. Lahat ng request for correction should be channeled through this email. Okay? Marami naman tayong sasagot at magre-respond yan. Then, check the entries before submission. Read the confirmation messages. Each time you submit, lagi may pop-up window. Laging may confirmation messages. Okay? So please pay attention. Tignan ninyo ah, libre ang application sa UP. Oras lang ang hinihingi. At saka syempre, yung ating sariling um, seriousness sa pag-accomplish ng form. So basahing maigi yung mga instructions. Basahing maigi yung mga confirmation messages before you click. Think before you click. Think before you click. Kasi ang dami sa... Marami yan eh. Bago ka makarating sa dulo, ang daming confirmation messages. Bini-verify kung tama ba yung desisyon na ginawa mo. Ibig sabihin, sin ginawa mo to, i-verify pa namin yung kinoconfirm namin. You decided to this. You decided to this. Na? So, we, we gave that. Na? We, we gave that to you. And then, please do the necessary confirmation. Okay? Para mabawasan din yung mga emails namin requesting for changes and corrections. And then for minors, you need your parents and your or your gar legal guardians to sign the waivers. There is remember our our application is a legal document, no? So well vetted ang ating privacy notices, ang ating general information bulletin. Ni review ito ng napakaraming mata at mga lawyers sa loob ng UP. So yung mga laman yan ay talagang ayon sa batas ng Data Privacy Act. No, at ayon sa RA, yung ating Organic Act ng University of the Philippines. So, yung paghingi namin ng, ng signature ng inyong mga magulang ay bahagi ng requirement na provided sa batas. So, wag, kung may, mga, may magulang kayo na ayaw, ayaw mag-upload ng, ng signature, pakibasa ang privacy notice kasi naroon ang promise ng university na hindi gagamitin sa anumang paraan. 
yung signature na yon kundi isa lamang indicator na naintindihan ng magulang yung pag-apply ng kanilang mga anak. Yun lang po yung kailangan na yun lang po ang meaning ng pag-apply, pag-upload ng parent signature or guardian signature. Similarly with the schools, no, may mga registrars na ayaw mag-upload ng signature dahil natatakot sila na baka daw ma-identity theft. Again, may privacy notice at ito ay dumaan sa mga lawyers ng university. Um, protektado yung, yung right ng mga nag-upload ng kanilang mga signature. Okay. Meron din tayong UPCA online help desk. No? Pwede itong isearch sa Facebook. Ang kagandahan sa online help desk ay mga kuya at ate rin ninyo ito. Mga estudyante sila ng UP na nagkalat sa Pilipinas. Hindi lamang sila taga Diliman. No? Nagkalat sila sa buong Pilipinas. There are 300 of them. Bukas ang help desk mula alas 10 ng umaga hanggang alas 11 ng gabi except on Sundays. You can chat with the with the volunteers. You can have you can share video. Yung pwede kayong nag-uusap through video, pwede nila kayong i-walk through doon sa portal. So halimbawa ipapakita ano yung screen, di ba? So i-walk through nila kayo para mabawasan yung pagkakamali doon sa pag-fill out ng form. Pwedeng lumapit sa help desk, hindi lamang ang aplikante. Pwede ang mga guro, ang mga registrars, even the parents can go to the online help desk to seek assistance from our student volunteers. Meron din kami mga empleyado sa Office of Admissions na nariyan at minsan ako ay nariyan. Hindi nyo lang kilala kasi iba yung mga pangalan namin doon. No? So, uh, uh, minsan nariyan ako uh, pag, pag libre, pag, pag medyo may konting um, rest period sa office, pero karaniwan ay mga empleyado namin at mas marami ay mga UP students. Uh, mga volunteer sila. Buhay na buhay ang volunteerismo sa UP. Walang bayad ito. Uh, pasasalamat lamang matapos ang proseso ng application. So please uh, seek our um, assistance through the online help desk. Um, ay, by the way, araw-araw nagbabago yung link sa chat room. Okay, so pagpasok ninyo sa UP system, uh, UPCAT UP system site sa, sa Facebook, naka-post doon ano yung applicable for the day. No? Parang, parang US Embassy, di ba? Okay, additional assessment as approved by the various university councils of different constituent universities, academic units may require additional assessment for final qualification to a degree program. You will be notified of such additional assessment as well as any other additional requirements after evaluation of your high school records. For scholarship, meron tayong scholar ng bayan, socialized tuition, oblation scholarship, kapag may test, yung top 50, DOST, barangay and other government scholarships, at napakaraming private scholarships sa loob ng university. Uh, sa UP, libre ang pag-aaral, zero ang ating amount payable. Pero kung kailangan pa talaga ng financial na tulong, pwede pa rin lumapit sa university, makakahingi pa kayo ng stipend, provided siyempre na justified yung request. And also, dahil remote learning ngayon, the university provides uh, uh, gadgets and sometimes uh, load no? para naman maka-afford maka tayo ng, ng connectivity, internet connectivity. So ang daming Ang daming tulong na ibinibigay ng university sa estudyante. Actually, hindi university eh. Taong bayan talaga eh. Na, yung, yung taong bayan na, na nagbabayad niyan. Hindi, kami lamang ay guardian no? or steward ng perang yon. Pero actually, galing yan sa buwis ng ating mga mamamayan. A scheduled online application is from October 25. Malapit na ang deadline, November 30, 2021. All, academic, uh, all application documents must be in or postmarked by November 30. So kung hindi man makarating sa amin physically yung mga, let's say, yung mga Form 137, pero postmark naman siya or, or meron kayong transaction receipt from the courier na napadala niya ito on or before November 30, honored naman yan. Uh, bago ako matapos, meron tayong, meron tayong um, pagtanggap na hindi lahat sa inyo ay kayang magkaroon ng access sa online application. Ito yung mga last mile schools, yung mga malalayong rural areas. Uh, kapag ganun ang sitwasyon at sa pala, may kakilala kayo na hindi kaya mag-online application, lumapit lamang sa pahinungod. Sa UPLB, meron tayong pahinungod office. Um, 
ang pahinungod ang tutulong sa inyo para makapag-apply. Na? So, um, Ma'am Shep, paki-share na lang sa grupo doon sa mga magtatanong ano yung uh, paraan para ma- ma- maka ma-reach out ang UP Pahinungod in UPLB kasi nag-usap na kami ko ano ang tulong na pwede nilang ibigay sa mga bat- sa mga application applicants na hindi talaga makaka-afford ng connectivity or talagang walang connectivity sa lugar nila. Last year, alam nyo ba, naka-299 tayo natulungan na hindi sila nakapag-online application pero na-facilitate natin yung pagpasok nila sa UP. Nakakatawa at marami rin sa kanila ang nakapag-qualify kahit hindi sila nakapag-online. Okay? So, yun po. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, Sir Kiko. Very straightforward yung presentation ni Sir. No? Lahat nakalagay na doon kung ano mga dapat mong gawin. Yeah. At sina- gusto ko lang talagang i- ano, i-emphasize yung sinabi ni Sir. Think before you click. Kasi all yes. of the information are there already. Kung hindi naintindihan sa unang basa, Sir, no? basahin mm-hmm. ulit. Bago yes. mag-click, double check. Diba, Sir? So yes. that... <laughs> Design talaga yung portal na parang... Uh, kung magkakamali ka sa simula, i-confirm eh. Ganun din, ano, ganun din yung general information bulletin. Yun po, sa mga siguro nabubore yung mga bata, sanay sila na, ay, accept na lang. Huwag, basahin nyo yung general information bulletin. Pinaghir- ilang gabi kong pinuyat yun ha. <laughs> Six pages yun, dumaan pa sa legal. Ilang, ilang emails, palitan ng mga lawyers para to make sure that each word is valid, each word is according to the law. So, yung general information bulletin, lahat yan, it encompasses everything about admission to the university for 2022. So, basahin po natin at yung mga magulang na nanonood ngayon or mga school officials na nanonood ngayon, basahin din po ninyo yung general information bulletin para makilala ninyo ang university at yung admission process na kakaiba sa university. <laughs> All right Thank you so much, Sir Kiko. Ayan, napakadami nyo ng senior sa atin, no? Magbasa kasi training na natin yan as future yes. student ka. Alright? Kasi pinaghirapan talaga ni Sir. Sir, you will be still joining us for <laughs> yes, the question yes, and answer? Yes, I'll stay until the end. Uh-huh. Alright. Uh, until the end. Apo. Because we will be also having specific college admi- uh, UPLB admission process and we will be going to the second part nitong ating uh, yeah. session 3. So para kumpletong kompleto na lahat ano mga yeah. future is ko in is ka. Once again Sir Kiko, thank you so much. Um uh, if you have questions already for Sir Kiko, feel free to comment down yeah. in our comment sections. Ready ready yan si Sir <laughs> na magsilbi yes. para sa atin. All right? Now, let's move forward to the second part of our session 3. Hashtag UPQT pa rin ito, ha? mga scholar, mga future scholar ng bayan para sa bayan. So, let me introduce to you our second speaker. She graduated BS Statistics here in UP Los Baños. She took her Master of Science in Statistics at Iowa State University and Master of Science in Computer Science at the National University of Singapore. She also she is also a PhD candidate in computer science here in UP Los Baños. Currently, our speaker is our university registrar of UP Los Baños and assistant professor from the Institute of Computer Science, College of Arts and Science. And to share with us the admission process here in UP Los Baños. Kung gusto mo talaga mag UP, makinig ka dito. Let's please welcome in the Zoom space Professor Margarita Carmen S. Paterno. Mamars, good morning. So good morning to everybody. So welcome. Um, so it's nice to know that many of you are here to learn about the admission process dito, not just to UP, pero to UPLB as well. As you know, the UPLB is a considered a premier uh, educational and um, research institution, not just in the country, but in the region. No? So we have a lot to offer. Uh, I am sure you have heard a lot about UPLB in the previous, uh, in day one, no, nitong webinar series. So um, I'm here essentially to brief you on the admission process to UPLB. No? Okay, so let me get started here. Share.
screen up there. Okay, so I hope it is now stop. Kita ba yung slides ko? Okay naman? Yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Siglit lang. I just have to set up something here also as well. Oops, sorry. Oh, okay. No, so, sorry, ha. Hindi ko lang ang nangyari dito. Let me pull up something. Ayan. So, so you feel as Banos uh, is just one of the many constituent universities of comprising the UP system. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is a known premier educational and research institution, institution in the country, both in the country and in the region. And there are nine colleges and two schools that offer 29 undergraduate programs and probably more than 100 graduate programs, no? So uh, these are the 29 undergraduate programs um, offered by UP Los Banos. So there is the BA Communication Arts, BA Philosophy, uh, BA Sociology, uh, BS Agribusiness Management and Entrepreneurship, BS Agricultural and uh, Applied Economics, BS Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering, BS Agricultural Biotechnology, BS Agricultural Chemistry, BS Agriculture, BS Applied Mathematics, uh, BS Applied Physics, BS Biology, BS Chemical Engineering, BS Chemistry, BS uh, Civil Engineering, computer, BS Computer Science, BS Development Communication, BS Economics, BS Electrical Engineering, BS Food Science and Technology, BS Forestry, BS Human, human Ecology, BS Industrial Engineering, BS Mathematics, BS Mathematics and Science Teaching, BS Mechanical Engineering, BS Nutrition, BS Statistics, and Doctor in of Veterinary Medicine. So uh, I expect this was in many of these programs were introduced to you during the first day of this webinar series. Okay. So as for the uh, admission process to UPLB, there are three ways that you can get into UPLB. So there is the usual admission via the UPCAT or uh, the UPCAT, which was already discussed earlier by Sir Kiko. And uh, you may also be admitted through what is commonly known as the wait list or reconsideration or appeals. And uh, lastly, you may also be admitted by transferring from another university or college outside of the UP system. So let me go through each of these uh, in a little detail, in a little more detail. So first of all, there's the admission to UPLB via UPCAT. Uh, as I already mentioned earlier, and we discussed not only Sir Kiko, so I won't go any more into the details of uh, where you have to, uh, about the portal, any more requirements, document requirements, etc. okay? So to be naturally admitted into UPLB, you must be qualified for a degree program in UPLB via, via the UPCAT. And, uh, and uh, once you are admitted, uh, just a heads up here, uh, just to follow up on what uh, Sir Kiko gave earlier, uh, you are expected to submit the following for enrollment. Um, of course, since qualifier kayo sa UPLB, you have to submit your UPCA admission notice that will be uh, generated if you're, uh, once you qualify. Okay, and then 
You also have to provide us with your Form 138, yan yung Grade 12 na report card, and your Form 137, yan yung Junior at Senior High School report card. Um, we shall uh, be requiring you to upload this to a portal. So we, we need a scan or a soft copy essentially of these two documents. And eventually we shall also be requiring you to submit a hard copy no, of these two forms. So kailangan natin yung original and a photocopy of forms 138 and 137. And we shall also require you to submit your PSA birth certificate. Um, we also need a scan of this and a hard copy eventually, the original and the photocopy. Uh, kung wala kayong PSA, pwede din yung MSO. Um, and then we also need your recent ID picture. Uh, kailangan white yung background non. And uh, we need, I think, three printed copies of your ID picture. Lahat identical, ha? Hindi pwede yung isa ay serioso, yung isa ay wacky. Okay, so kailangan identical lahat yun. And we all will also require to upload a soft copy of your ID picture as well. And if you are a foreign uh, student, that is when we shall also require you to submit a uh, scan of the first two pages of your valid passport. And, as, and, and later on, again, uh, we shall be um, requiring you to submit a hard copy, uh, sorry, a photocopy, I should say, of the first two pages of your passport. Ngayon, uh, details regarding the submission of these particular documents will be um, provided to you uh, once you are qualified uh, to the degree program. So pag nakakwalify na kayo, then we shall be notifying you about the, the requirements, these required documents, as well as the procedure of how to get, how to be, uh, how to enroll no, into UPLB. So we shall be announcing that eventually, okay? We'll be, we'll be getting in touch with you via your, via your mail, the email that you provided uh, when you applied for the UPCAT, okay? So yan yung essentially yung admission to UPLB via the UPCAT. Ngayon, uh, you can also be admitted through as I said earlier, uh, what is commonly referred to as wait list or reconsideration or appeals. Um, because if, if, as you know, may ma qualifiers for degree programs in UPLB, and there are some of those who do not confirm their slot or else they, they signal their intention to no longer enroll in that degree program in UPLB. So what happens there is that mafi free up yung slot nila, no? Naka reserving slot sa kanila, pero since they're no longer interested in enrolling in UPLB, maging available ng slot na yon. So sayang naman yung slot na yon. So that is what those available slots, therefore, will be uh, offered or will be given to those who are uh, who are interested in waitlisting or being admitted to the waitlist or reconsideration. Okay, so. Um, yung requirements dito in order to be wait, uh, by the way, ito yung mga wait list, yung pwede mag wait list dito are usually yung mga non-qualifiers. No? So if you're not able to qualify uh, for UPL, for a degree program in UPLB via the, uh, via the UPCAT, no? then you can apply through this particular ano, method, yung wait list or kaya yung reconsideration. So the minimum requirements to be considered for admission to waitlisting here in UPLB, UPLB is that you must meet the UPG cutoff for UPLB, which is currently set at 2.8. And then there are also additional requirements that you must meet. Uh, those will be announced later on. And particularly, there will be also requirements to be set by the different departments offering the degree program. So you must therefore uh, meet the additional requirements set by those units for the degree program that you are applying to, okay? So right now I cannot give those specifics, you know, specifics nitong mga additional requirements because those will be announced later on. No? Uh, but just to give you an idea of what is usually expected, minsan, uh, some uh, units require, for example, a higher 
UPG cut-off kasi kung let's say 2.8 ang cut-off sa UPLB, sa buong UPLB, they might require something higher like 2.6. No? Uh, and then uh, uh, some units might also require maybe that you have taken a particular track in senior high school or else maybe uh, ano nga pala yung iba? Or else, oh, yung iba nga minsan nag-require na kailangan first choice itong degree program, not first or second choice in degree program na to when you applied for the UCAT. No? So those are just some of the, and some even, by the way, also require online, in this case, online interview no? during the pandemic. So those are just uh, some of the additional requirements that some uh, units may require for some degree programs dito sa UPLB. So the, as I said earlier, the particulars about those requirements will be uh, announced later on, okay? Now the procedure for uh, waitlisting, so UPLB, um, details of that will be announced. Iba, Sir Kiko? <laughs> Iba na ngayon here. So uh, we yeah. won't be able to bribe, provide details for that as well. So we announce na lang yon, no? Yes, yes. But, yeah, but essentially what will happen is that when you apply to be waitlisted or when you apply, when you appeal for con reconsideration, no, uh, your applications naturally will be further screened by the unit uh, offering the degree program that you applied to. No? So they'll uh, eval evaluate your application based on the additional requirements that they set for that degree program. Okay. So yan essentially yung uh, admission procedure through waitlisting or appeal for reconsideration dito sa UPLB. So yung ibang details, so it, ito lang yung overall idea behind that uh, process and more details will be provided later on. Pag naging official na yung procedure, okay? And finally, there is... Uh, the transfer, you can transfer from another university or college outside the UP system. No? So if you are unable, if you are you are not able to get admitted into UPLB via the uh, UPCAT or even via itong wait list, then uh, another option for you is to enroll in another university or college outside the UP system, okay? So enroll in, uh, in a degree program in another university. And then after maybe about a year, you can apply to transfer into a degree program in UPLB, okay? And so in that case, uh, if you apply to transfer to a degree program in UPLB, these are the following requirements. So a transfer applicant may be admitted to UPLB via transfer provided that they earned at least 33 academic units with a general weighted average of 2.0 or better for all collegiate uh, academic units taken outside the UP system. So I'm emphasizing here academic units because uh, when we refer to academic units, that refers that doesn't include PE, physical education or else NST, NSTP courses, okay? So strictly academic units itong, uh, you should have earned at least 33 academic units, okay? And then uh, another requirement is that you should not, you will have to complete in UP, in UPLB, not less than 50% of the units required for the degree program that you're applying to. And that will have to be raised to 75% if you're running for honors. Okay, because uh, uh, you must essentially be able to complete majority of your uh, the units in your degree program dito sa UPLB. And then uh, naturally, um, you can only be admitted provided that there are enough slots available in the degree program uh, based on the quota set by the dean of the college um, offering the degree program, okay? So if you are interested in uh, applying to transfer to UPLB, you must submit the following. You have to submit the official copy of grades or transcript of records from every college that you attended. Okay. 
and then you must accomplish, uh, you must also accomplish a, the undergraduate application form that is UPLB form three. That is, you can download this now from the UPLB office of the university register website. Okay, so you must accomplish that. And then for foreign students only, there is a non-refundable application fee of you, uh, 20 US dollars. Okay, so ito lang yung kailangan niya submit. Of course, there's a deadline set for that. He announced John Pedro, that's usually um, a few weeks before uh, registration, a few weeks before the start of the semester, no? itong deadline for submitting applications for transfer to UPLB. Again, uh, I advise you to keep your eye out, to keep an eye on the uh, UPLB Office of the University Registrar website for uh, announcements on these, okay? Now, uh, I must also inform you that when you transfer, when you apply to transfer from other universities and college, colleges, uh, there are actually some degree programs that do not accept transfer students from outside U UP, no? And these are BS Computer Science, BS Chemical Engineering, essentially the engineering courses, no? BS Civil Engineering, BS Electrical Engineering, BS Industrial Engineering, BS Mechanical Engineering. Okay, uh, that's mainly due to limited facilities, no? So, uh, pero if you are interested in these degree programs, Pwede kayong mag-trans, pwede kayong mag-apply to transfer to a related program and then later on apply to shift, no? Provided that maganda yung performance niyo naturally, no? Kasi there are requirements also set by the units to uh, to admit shifties, no? To their respective degree programs. So ayan. Okay? So essentially um ito yung uh, procedure for transferring from other universities and colleges, okay? So, uh, ayan. so essentially, um, if you have questions, uh, here's our contact information. We are the Office of the University Registrar in UP Los Baños is located in the ground floor of the CAS Annex building along Pedro Sandoval Avenue. Um, ito yung dalawang landline numbers namin. Our website is at oer.upld.edu.ph. And you may also contact us, us through our email addresses. Our primary email address is our.upld at up.edu.ph. And of course, since you, uh, uh, you, I expect your questions will be regarding admission, then you can contact the staff of the admission section via the email address admission underscore our.upld at up.edu.ph. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for listening. So I hope you learned something about how you can be admitted into a degree program in UPLB. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Marge. Ayan. Salagang kompleto na po ang kanilang mga information regarding sa UPCA, sa college admission process here in UP and also in UPLB. Now, to we would like to take this opportunity already to award the certificates to our dear speakers. So to award the certificates of appreciation, I would like to kindly recognize in our Zoom space, our incoming director, um, Professor John Mervyn L. Mbate. Let me just kindly read the citations first. Certificate of appreciation is awarded to Francisco N. De Los Reyes for serving as resource speaker during the third session on hashtag UPQT. Know more about UP, UP College admission process in the Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0 webinar series, UPLB recruitment program for the best and the brightest students held today, 24 November 2021 at the Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College Laguna, signed by our officer in charge and incoming director, John Mervyn L. Mbate. The same certificate is given to... Margarita Carmen is paterno, also for serving as resource speaker in our third session today, held 24 November 2021 at the Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Los Baños College, Laguna, signed by our incoming director, John Mervyn L. Mbate. Sir J.M. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you very much, Sir Kiko and Ma Marge, for 
uh, your attendance, your participation today, and for sharing your knowledge and expertise to our participants. Uh, para na, nakuha ko dito na hindi to with na linya no yung pagpunta natin pagpasok natin sa UP na minsan likuliku siya pero ang highlight sa akin nito yung essence ng pagbalik no na parang yung pagpasok mo sa UP kung hindi ka man pinalad sa unang pagkakataon pwede ka pa rin pwede mo pa rin siyang balikan through a myriad of ways which yeah. uh, have been presented to us by uh, Sir Kiko and Ma Marge and I think yung pinaka-importante doon yung pagbabalik natin sa UP at sa bayan kapag winelcome na tayo ng UP sa uh, kanyang tahanan. Maraming maraming salamat po. This is landmark for uh, LRC dahil first time po namin na nakasama si Sir Kiko at si Ma'am Marge sa webinar namin. And hopefully, uh, matuloy-tuloy po natin to in our future activities. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Sir JM. And at this point, we would like to also request for um, a picture taking with you po. Bago po tayo tumungo sa mga questions ng ating mga estudyante na napakadami na po sa listahan. So we would like to also ask her jicker hands. You can also open your camera if you want so that we can have a photo opportunity with uh, Sir Kiko and Ma'am Marge. Okay po. So smile po tayo sa camera. Ready? One, two, three. Smile. Isa pa po. Ready? One, two, three. Smile. Okay pa. All right. So we are now opening the floor for your questions for Sir Kiko and Ma Marge. And meron na po tayong nauna dito, Sir, na nag nagtanong sa ating Facebook Live. And then later on, I'll be reading some of the questions from our registration form. Si Jiwela Geriba, sabi niya po sir ay nakasabit na po siya ng online application but yung last part daw po eh, which is the fourth box, hindi daw po nalagay ng check kahit nasabit na po at confirmed na submitted. Okay, um, those boxes will be checked after November 30. It will come together with the PDF of your acknowledgement receipt. So wag mangamba kasi meron ka sa taas na mababasa, di ba? You have uh, successfully submitted your form. 1 and 2B. So, nasa taas yun. Confirmed yun. Sa baba, wala pang check. Sa iba, sa ila, kung babasahin po ninyo, sa ilalim ng box na yun, may parenthetical remark na after November, after the application process, uh, after the application period nyo, makikita as check. <laughs> yun na naman. Magbasa tayo, ha? <laughs> All right, Joel, I hope that answers your question from Sir Kiko. Now, si Junji, sir, sabi niya po, he is from... Mindanao. Maggie's morning po. I'm from Mindanao and pinasa namin yung documents last November 20, 2021. Then knowing po na malayo yung Mindanao from UP Office of Admissions, baka matagal daw po ang pagpasa ng document or malate. Ninyo matanggap yung documents. Tatanggapin pa po ba or i-consider? At okay. may chances po ba na ma-extend daw or bubukas kayo ulit ng admission for this? Oh, first, Junji, congratulations for winning the mentee. <laughs> survey kanina siyang winner kanina di ba 1821 one points eh but ganun <laughs> talagang kinaril niya yung ano yung yung contest kanina anyway uh, Junji uh, we, once uh, we, we will know naman uh, when the package was postmarked so if you sent it via registered mail nakalagay yan doon sa pakete um, for uh, courier no, yung mga courier services when we receive it naman, we have, diba, we acknowledge eh. So we will know when you send it. And um, one redundancy that you can have is have a copy of that receipt that you got when you sent the documents. So for as long as they are postmarked on or before November 30, we will accept. Um, there is no extension for, for now. No, there is no extension because... Um, based on our data, more than half na ang nakarating. So parang kung meron dyang trickles na hindi makakarating by November 30, I think they were all sent earlier than November 30. So we do not see, kasi data-driven din kami mag-decide <laughs> sa, sa Office of Admission. So we know na darating yan kasi karamihan na riyan na eh. Karamihan na riyan na dun sa 137,000. Kasi last time nag-present ako nung webinar, half more than half na anariyan that's last week. Kanina hindi pa ako nag-check pero alam ko marami na talaga. Andiyan. 
Alright, so wag mag-worry, Junji. Wag mag-worry, Junji. Enjoy mo lang yung price mo. Yes. <laughs> Grabe yung recall ni Sir. <laughs> Kilala niya yung nanalo sa Mentimeter. <laughs> Congratulations din, Junji. Alright. So, uh, from the FB Live as well, Sir, si... Let me just check. Si Christelle Layakan. Sabi niya po, Sir, good day po. Sino po yung magpapasa ng Form 2A para sa mga graduate na pong student na mag apply po? Salamat okay. po. Okay, Christelle. Um, kung ikaw yon yung graduates yung graduate na yon better kasi you um when you graduated you already got your form 137 i believe so photocopy lamang yon ng kailangan namin kasi yun yun eh di ba your your school will only provide a copy for you officially and once admitted to UP for example in UPLB your school will provide another copy to the university hindi na dadaan sa kamay mo yon so ang 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 belief ko ay graduates na hindi pa nagka-college, they have their Form 137. You also have your Form 138, yung report card mo nung grade 12. Hawak mo rin yun eh. So, photocopy lang ang kailangan namin, Christelle. So, pwedeng ikaw ang magpadala kasi graduate ka na sa eskwela hang yun. Sa mga grade 12 pa lang ngayon, we requested them to have the to send it over to us or ipagkatiwala sa estudyante na isab kung marami kasing sumulat sa amin na hindi nila kaya magpadala sa university nung kopya para sa UP. So, ang ginawa nila, in-endorse nila sa estudyante. Pero sealed yun eh, firmado. Ang instruction lamang, huwag buksan ng estudyante para hindi matamper, di ba? Kasi we will, kami yung may karapatang mag-open nun kasi signed by the school authority. So, Christelle, pwedeng ikaw na mismo yan. Magpadala. Alright. So, Christelle, uh, I hope that answers your question. Now, Mark Sanglier, sir, I was just wondering po, does the number of units na nilagay sa Form 2B affects my chances in getting into UP? Opo, kasi <laughs> we're getting weighted averages. So, dapat alam nyo kung ano yung units ninyo. Pero huwag ka mag-alala. Kasi kung marami naman kayo sa paara lang yan ang nag-apply, hindi naman namin take face value yung sinulat mo kung nagkamali ka eh. Meron naman kaming cross-checking. We have vertical cross-checking and horizontal cross-checking. So, ibig sabihin, kayo magkakaklase. Bawa, ang unit nyo sa chemistry is 1.5. Nag-typo ka. 1.3 na ilagay mo. Hindi naman namin ipaprocess yung 1.3 eh. Kasi bakit yung class mo, lahat sila 1.5, ikaw 1.3. Ang UP ay matalino masyado para malaman yan. <laughs> We have our long-standing ways of quality assurance among, among the data. So, we do not We do not feed immediately whatever you give us. We have a validation process that takes two months. No? Ganon ka conscientious ang university para mag-trap ng mga errors. So may mga errors kayo mga kumit, tanggap namin yon. May due diligence ang university para ituwid yan kapag kaya namin yung i-infer at our end. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Um... Kaya kailangan talagang maingat sa pag i mm, Pero kung hindi nakaingat, meron, maingat naman ang UP. <laughs> <laughs> Vertical and horizontal. Horizontal. Uh. All right. Sir, si Rosel Cruz, uh, paano daw po nila malalaman kung na-receive na po ng UP yung Form 137 na pinadala po nila through LBC? Ayun. Um, magkakaroon ng tick yung box. Diba? Doon sa confirmation, meron several, may series of boxes. Kasama doon yung Form 2A, magkakar- mag- kami na yung magtitik nun. Malalaman mo na. At saka, after November 30, um, isasummarize na namin lahat eh. So pati mga additional documents. Yung iba doon kasing mga documents, hindi talaga siya nakalagay sa tick box. May mga special, may mga special requirements kami hinihingi na hindi na namin kailang ilagay sa portal. Pero i-reach out namin sa inyo through email. So um they are more of exceptions ra- exceptions rather than rule. So like yung mga eskwelahan na may kakaibang paraan ng pagtuturo ng certain courses. So may iba kaming hinihingin dokumento doon sa Office of Admission. So email na lang 'yon. Pero doon sa tanong mo na 137 may special box 'yan. All right. So Rizel, I hope that answers your question. Now, I'll be moving forward sir dun sa questions ng mga advance sinen po ng ating mga registered yeah. participants. Ito na po yung mga tungkol sa mismong UPCA. Is oh, there okay. really a chance daw po that I can pass the UPCA even if I have average grades, not too high, not honors daw, not honor daw po, also not failing grades? 
during junior high school. Okay, napaka-interesting ng tanong na yan. Ang university admission sa UP ay uh, galing sa galing. Galing sa galing, primarily. But we have a 70-30 rule that says that we, ac- we acknowledge excellence but we also acknowledge equity. Okay? So, meron tayong uh, paraan ng pagtingin sa ating mga aplikante na pwedeng kasing galing ka ng isang tao sa, i- sa ibang paaralan pero may konting konsiderasyon dahil malayo ka sa urban center o kaya ikaw ay nasa isang nasa lower income group. Okay? So, meron tayong mga konsiderasyon sa mga ganyan. Pero siyempre, excellence pa rin ang ang uh, primary reason na kung bakit ka ma-accept sa university. So, kung may chance, may chance, no? Kasi ang pagpasok sa UP ay minsan destiny rin eh at minsan sa appetite ng application. Minsan sa appetite talaga. Um, taon-taon, dynamic yon. Pwedeng nasa regular yung grade mo, nasa hindi ganong kataasan, pero nagsulat ka ng isang kurso, naging undersubscribe sa panahong iyon. No? Dahil pumipila tayo sa walong iba't ibang kurso, kapag pumila ka dun sa kurso na hindi naging subscribe, prop, hindi uh, na prom undersubscribe sa panahong iyon, maari kang makapasok sa universidad. Ang dami kong experience niyan ngayong nakaraang up ka na hindi kasing taas yung UPG nila dun sa ibang nakapasok. Pero nakapasok pa rin sila dahil pumili sila ng mga kurso na nagkataon naman na undersubscribe sa panahong yon Hindi natin napipredik yon kasi taon-taon, iba-iba ang appetite ng mga aplikante. May mga taon na super ang physical therapy. May mga taon na halos mamatay ang BS statistics. Ang dami niyan, taon-taon yan, iba-iba yan. So minsan dahil sa panahon, biglang nagiging intense ang demand for particular courses. May mga panahon naman, biglang nagdidwindle yung demand. So, maging strategic lamang tayo sa pagpili ng kurso natin. Walo naman yung pagpipilian. Walo naman yung pipiliin sa 175 na pagpipilian. Right? So, kung ikaw ay sa palagay mo, ah, wag mong isipin na mediocre ako or average ako. Walang ganun. No? Kasi, uh, merong 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 chance na maaari kang makapasok sa degree program na at least one doon sa napili mo dahil nga malamang medyo undersubscribed yung yung uh, degree program na yun. Dalawa ang ang level ng pagpasok sa university. Now, the first one is of course entering the university via the UPG and then entering the degree program. Ito yung sinasabi kong dictated by appetite na ang hirap i-model kasi hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na taon-taon laging number one ang BS Psychology. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin yon Kasi iba-iba talagang appetite ng mga kabataan na pumapasok through, nag apply through UPCAT. Malamang nagkataon na sumikat yung this, this past 2021, ang naging high ticket courses ay yung mga leading to health related courses dahil nag-pandemic feeling ko. And, yun, ang doon lahat eh. Pero there were years na engineering ang nasa number one. Tapos ngayon, hindi sila nag-number one. Comsai used to be number one. Diba? Tapos ngayon, biglang bumabalik na naman yung health-related. For a while, nawala rin sila. Eh. Dati, nursing number one. Physical therapy number one. Nawala din sila sa top five. Top ten. So, ganun. Appetite pa rin talaga. Eh. So, be strategic. Yun lang ang advice ko. Be strategic in in defining the the courses that you nominate in the application form. All right, thank you Sir Kiko. Sir, siguro kasunod po nung question for that. May tips po ba kayo Sir kung paano po nila lalagay yung mga courses dun sa first choice, second choice, third choice? Kasi parang may narinig po tayo na o oh, pag quota course yung nilagay mo sa unahan, dapat yung pangalawa. Or maybe Ma'am March din can can also pitch in po dun sa pag-answer. Ma'am March, baka meron siyang tips. <laughs> Well, oops. Teka, teka. Okay. Um, yung uh, advice ko lang doon is, well, um, yan nga, mahirap din i-predict nga, kagaya na sinabi ni Sir Kiko. Uh, that's what we observe also in UPLD. 
for this particular year, ito yung trending na degree program. In another year, iba naman. So it's hard to predict. Pero um, I I would still advise na you put in the programs that you are really interested in. Yes. No? That you... Kasi mahirap talaga yung uh, you are admitted into a degree program that you are not... That you won't put your heart into. Sa totoo lang. And in the end, hindi ka ma... I mean, you won't have any motivation <laughs> to to take the courses in that particular program. Pero um uh yeah, nga. essentially put in the programs first of all that you're interested in and then uh maybe you'll hear also uh you get some idea then from perhaps past years kung ano yung usually very competitive na degree programs no and uh you might, I wouldn't say you want to avoid those, no? But if you really want that particular course, then go ahead, go for that particular course, if you're really interested in it. I'm, I'm sure if you're, besides, I'm sure also if you're good, if you're really interested, interested in a degree program, uh, you surely, your, surely your grades will also reflect that, no? that yeah. And your chances yeah. of getting into that degree program will be pretty good. So, uh, any advice ko essentially, um, choose the degree program that you're really interested in. Uh, yan. <laughs> That's all I can say. Mm -mm. Kasi talaga, uh, mahirap talaga i-predict kung ano yung yeah. mahirap pasukan talaga. Uh, you might want to judge, for example, based on yung quota ng bawat isang degree program din na uh, maraming sets available dito. But then again, there are programs that are very popular. No? So kahit yeah. madaming slots yun, if it's very popular, you'll be competing against a yeah. lot of any other applicants. No? Yan yon. So may trade-off din yun. <laughs> yan lang yung masasabi ko. Thank you, Ma'am Marge. Sabi nga ni Sir Kiko, no, be strategic. Kung mag-fall oh. short ka dun sa photo course na nilagay mo at gustong-gusto mo yan, ba, engineering man yan or biology course yan or um, pre-med course yan or something, di mag-strategize ka na ano yung second na mas gusto mong course. Kasi ganun po yung ginawa ko before. Yeah. Nag-apply ako, sir. <laughs> Parang inano kami na uh, first choice mo yung gusto mo talagang puntahan. Yes. Um, ang tawag ito, gusto mong puntahan na, na university or campus and then yung first choice mo talaga na course. And then pag sa isip ko, kung mag-fall short ako dito, ano yung next na gusto kong course? Yun ang yes. nilagay ko, sir. So, oh. Just uh, fortunate and blessed enough, pasado po yung UPG both dun sa dalawa kong gustong um, campuses. Eh, dahil UP Las Banyas yun, so UP Las Banyas na talaga yung, yung pinili ko. So just a tip for those who are... Uh, oh. Yeah, I agree. Kung ano talaga yung strength mo, yun ang ilaban mo sa admission, sa, sa application. Yun ang ilaban mo. Yung, kung ano yung... Yung core, core, core competency na nararamdaman mo, uh, doon ka mag-excel, yun din ang ilagay mo. Um, ang kaibahan ninyo sa aming, sa amin, sa inerasyon namin, I'm talking to the applicants right now, you are all mature when you apply for UPCA yes. this time. You're already 18. So you have this power of discernment which is advanced from what we had when we were, what, precarious 15-year-olds? di ba? Imagine mo, ako, BS stat ako ha, I did not have any statistics in high school. I, I, yeah, I came from a school na ang focus ay moral guidance, Christian ethics, Christian living, religion. And doon, yung, doon ako galing sa ipara lang na yun. Tapos, nagkataon lang na parang ako yung, hindi <laughs> parang, ako yung PMO, uh, Philippine Math Olympiad uh, person doon sa eskwela hang yan. So I got special training together with some other uh, um, students from different schools naman. So I got this mathematics training but not from the school where I I enrolled. So I wanted to go to uh, honestly, I wanted to go to biology because I wanted to become a doctor. But uh Alam ko nung panahon na yun, sikat talaga yung bio. No, parang hirap kasi if you're coming from outside NCR, hindi kasi ako taga-NCR, uh, 
parang ang hirap makipag-compete doon sa mga ex- parang ganun yung mindset ko rin nung time na yun. I think people nowadays also have that na baka people from the better schools will have the edge tapos ikaw nagaling ka na ilan lang kayo nag-apply sa paar lang ito tapos galing ka pa sa labas ng NCR parang ang hirap i- ipantay yung sarili mo. So sabi ko I saw statistics uh, dahil <laughs> nakakahiya ma Marge para tayong stat pero ako yung <laughs> ano lang yung role sa tang ng statistics <laughs> y- yun lang yung <laughs> that's my criteria no that, that, and it became my first choice um I passed my first choice I got my first choice uh, and um the first test that I got in BS stat the, the the ECS I got 27 percent I failed my first test in the ECS stat course in the BS stat program. So it was a wake up call na hindi ka na high school, 'di ba? Hindi ka na high school, dapat triplehin mo na yung effort at hindi na dapat 'yan maulit. At hindi na nga siya naulit. The, the excellence in statistics came with the inspiration of the professors I had. Kasi ang gagaling ng mga teacher sa UP na parang kahit nung galing ka sa sa lusak, <laughs> sabi, tawag namin sa rili namin, galing ka sa gilage, sa, sa, sa gilid ng mga village, uh, dahil ang gagaling ng mga teachers mo, talagang nai-lift, mali-lift ka ng teachers mo doon sa potential mo na, na, na materialize. No? So, dahil meron kang inherent na talent for a particular course, ilaban mo yan, no? So ako, hindi ako, wala akong alam sa stat, pero meron akong training sa math. So parang na, 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 na push din yung interest ko sa stat na I chose it and loved it until now I'm a practicing professional statistician. So um, ano talaga eh, um, a, a, ang UP ay nariyan para pagalingin ka pa. No? So Alamin mo lang kung ano yung raw material meron ka at alam kong alam niyo na yan dahil 18 years old na kayo. Saan ka magaling? 'Di ba? Ilaban mo 'yon. Tapos uh, be strategic kasi pwede ka rin namang pumili ng ibang kurso. Similar. Oh. Oo, 'di ba? Na nasa interest related, mo rin. Oo, oh. oh, related, related doon sa interest mo. Pumili ka rin ng related sa interest mo. And uh, you know, uh, The universe has its way of conspiring for for you to materialize your dreams. Ang example ko dyan yung misis ko, UPLB graduate siya. Na? Uh, gusto niya noon maging doktor, pero sabi niya baka hindi ko kaya maging doktor. Nung pumasok sa UP, uh, org dev. Meron ba tayo? Meron tayo na? Ano bang... Ano yung... Come, sir. Devcom, Devcom. Devcom. Devcom siya. So nag-Devcom siya, tapos bigla lang siya nagkaroon ng kasi magaling siya sa mga ganyan eh, sa, sa magaling magsalita yung yung misis ko. So so parang naisip niya, bigla na lang bumalik yung fire na gusto niyang maging doktor. Nag-shift siya sa Zuo. Wala nang Zuo ngayon sa ano, wala sa na, UPLB. Wala na. So Major. nag-shift siya sa Zuo. Yung barkada niya nag-decide mag-NMAT, nagpag-graduate ng UP, nag-medicine. Ngayon, isa na siyang respetadong pediatrician. So, yung 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 universe magko-conspire doon sa ultimate dream mo, 'di ba? Basta la, ngayon magaling siyang sumulat, magaling siyang mag-research, nanalo siya ng national competition sa mga pediatrician nung siya yung senior resident sa Cardinal Santos Medical Center National Competition. So, nagamit niya yung yung background niya, natutunan niya sa before she got into zoology. So, ibig sabihin, may interest ka rin naman na ganun eh, di ba? So, piliin mo rin yun. Di ba? Piliin mo rin yun. Kasi da- darating at darating na ililid ka ng mundo, ililid ka ng universe doon sa sa destiny na para saan ka. So, I think that that is somehow um, something to consider na when you choose, no? Uh, find something that you are your heart is into and then nominate something that is related to it and somehow would be tangent to it. Yeah. So, ganun. Ako, hindi ako naging doktor, pero ngayon, clinical research ang ginagawa ko naman. So, para na rin akong doktor, di ba? Kasi I, I live my my career conversing with with medical practitioners and clinical researchers who are also medical doctors. 
All right, thank you Sir Kiko. Those are wonderful insights po sa ating mga futurist ko and iska no. Huwag mawawala ng pag-asa. Sabi yeah. ni Sir JM, hindi straight ang line. Yes, no? yes. Paikot-ikot 'yan. Paikot-ikot 'yan. Sabi nga ni Sir, 'di ba? Law of attraction. The universe will conspire in your favor. Basta <laughs> manifest mo ko ano yung gusto mo. Sigurado ka. Yes, sa- yes. Uh-huh. All right, going back sir sa college admission na question. <laughs> Ano daw po ba yung exact specific criteria to know who is going to pass or ace the UPCA? Grade-based ba daw po yan? Or yung school type? Pag-private ba daw? Or public? Mas may uh, chance makapasa? And other things that must be considered? Nat- natuwa ako kasi sabay nalaglag yung baba namin ni Ma'am Marge. <laughs> <laughs> Sa screen sabay gumanan. Okay. Kasi napaka-elaborate ng procedure. Hindi siya yung A plus B plus C plus D. Huwag niyo isipin yun, guys, ha? yung mga nasa audience ngayon. Hindi ito yung para kang nasa isang contest na 30% audience impact. Wala, hindi, wala kaming ganon. <laughs> hindi ganon ang UP. Meron din device na algorithm para sa inyo. No? Uh, bago pa man gamitin yung, yung algorithm na yon sa grades pa lang may ginagawa na ang university. No? Sa grades pa lang ninyo, bago pa man namin to ipasok doon sa uh, model na tinatawag. No? Um, doon sa pagtingin namin sa grades ninyo, meron na kaming makikita na kung sino yung medyo nakakaangat, sino yung hindi. Depende sa konteksto kung saan ka naroon. Example, kunwari, taga, taga Albay, ano ba maganda? Example, Sorsogon, for example. Tama ba yung aking reference? Oh yeah, tama. Sir, reference. Let's say in Sorsogon. Taga Sorsogon ka. Tapos, ang grade mo sa agham, 93. Pero yung kasunod mo, 88. Ang layo mo sa kanya, di ba? Tapos, titignan namin yung variability ng mga grades ninyo sa paaralan mo, sa uri ng paaralan mo, at sa rehiyo ninyo. No? Gusto namin malaman kung discriminating talaga yung distribution ng grades. At tinitignan namin yon sa bawat paaralan, sa bawat uri ng paaralan, at sa bawat rehiyon. Okay? So, merong way of transmuting and standardizing your grades. So, your grades as we see them does not enter the system as your grades per se. So, kung yung 93 mo sa grade card, sa report card mo, hindi talaga yan 93 para sa tingin ng UP. Minsan mababa yan, minsan mataas yan. <laughs> minsan, pat, minsan may pagtingin kami, depende kung saan ka naka, naka tawag dito, nasaan ka kumpara sa mga aplikante sa konteksto mo. So may mga ganong klase ng transmutation and standardization bago pa man namin i-compute yung UPG. Pero sa tanong mo, grades lang ba talaga? Hindi. No? Hindi man namin pinapublish pero nakalagay sa General Information Bulletin na meron kaming economic equity at meron kaming geographic factor. So, um, oo, yung compute namin yung grades mo pero may consideration kami sa mga taong nasa, sa mga aplikanteng ang household ay nasa low income group at saka nasa malayong lugar. Gayun din kung ikaw ay nasa cultural minorities No? May special consideration. So a concrete example, kunwari, may isang aplikante na galing sa isang highly urbanized center, ang UPG niya is 2.1. Tapos ikaw, galing ka sa isang rural area, 2.1 ka rin. Ikaw yung kukuni ng UP, hindi yung taga highly urbanized area. Pantay kayo. Tay kayo sa UPG, pero ang kukuni namin yung galing doon sa underrepresented places in the Philippines. Bilang Universidad ng Pilipinas, dapat uh, o responsibilidad ng UP na meron kaming iahon sa lahat ng bahagi ng Pilipinas. So meron tayong mga qualifier from Dinagat Island, Cuyo Island, Batanes, Sarangani, Tawi-Tawi, Sulu, nakadistribute sila doon. No? Dahil dyan sa equity element na yan. So main factor ang grades pero may considerasyon kami sa mga special groups, provided mataas din ang grade. Hindi naman automatic na porke naroon sila, eh, papasa na sila, ikakwalify namin. Dapat mataas pa rin ang grades nila. Pero may edge sila kung sakaling. Actually, hindi dapat, hindi naman tayo eh. Basta dapat hindi ganun kataas yung, kunwari, si, si 
NCR qualifier 2.301. Tapos ikaw, 2.305. Ikaw pa rin pipiliin namin. Galing kang rural. Kahit mas mataas si 2.301 kay 2.305. Sa pananaw ng UPG. Di ba? Meron pa rin kaming ganun. So meron yang delta, meron yang margin na dapat ma-hurdle ng isang galing sa highly urbanized center na maganda ang economic situation, na, na mataas ng konti yung grade sa'yo, mauungusan mo siya because of our equity. At I am really happy that in the last UPCA 2021, we were able to satisfy the 70-30. At actually, 69.38 ang nasa excellence, 30.62% uh, ang nasa equity. So hindi ibig sabihin na nasa equity ka ay hindi ka na excellent. Ha? Meron ka pa rin excellence dyan na nagkaroon lang ng kick yung consideration ng UP sa iyong um, uh, geographic and economic equity. So we are encouraging applicants talaga. Kaya nga, uh, ang pahinungod ay pumupunta sa ibang mga paaralan na hindi man naabot ng ating online application. Para, kasi may mga diamonds in the rough talaga tayo sa kanil. No? Sa, ba sa Bangsamoro, meron kaming nakuhang nine qualifiers last year. Imagine mo yon sa mga malalayong lugar sa, bang sa, sa BARM, meron tayong nine qualifiers last year, which is very good kasi ang konti talaga ng qualifiers sa kanila, ang konti rin ng applicants nila. Uh, so, UP is like that. No? So, um, uh, um, ang kind ng school, ba I may factor, we don't see you as a, as an enrollee of a particular school. Hindi nga namin, uh, when we process your data, hindi namin alam kung lalaki ka or babae ka, kung galing ka sa gantong paaralan. No, so grades lamat din na namin tapos yung economic factor mo at saka kung saan naroon saan kang saan ka naroon no saan ka sa geography ng Pilipinas um, uh, at iyan ay yun ang laman nung ng ating policy yeah. Thank you so much sir siguro naliwan, naliwanagan na ang ating mga ano kasi most of their questions sir they thought grade or baka school private public hmm. ganyan so ang answer no. doon yung rule ni sir na sinabi ni sir 7030 yeah, 70 30 mm -hmm. 30 equity yes 30 equity so major factor grades yung grades mo pero titingnan pa rin nila yon kung tama ba yung pagkaka-grade mo diba mm -hmm. so sobra siyang yes, collaborative so... rigorous yung ginawa na nila mm -hmm. na talagang para ma-factor in yung excellence and equity so sabi ni sir grades economic factor and then Lugar, geographic. Ge yeah, ge geographic, kung nasaan ka. So, may nagtanong kasi, sir, na kapag daw malayo ba daw siya, ay maliit yung chance niya na makapasok. Pero dun sa sinabi ni sir, mas kinoconsider uh, ka. Oo, oh, oh, mer meron kang additional uh, consideration kapag malayo ka. Yes, and then yung yes. meron din nagtanong, sir, yung financial problem, less fortunate, so naka-factor in din dun sa economic. Naka-factor in din po. Pa kung papansin niyo sa ating portal sa Form 1, di ba tinatanong namin ilan, magkano yung, uh, ano yung gross annual income ng iyong mga magulang? Tapos tinatanong din namin, may iba bang mga organisasyon or tao na tumulong for the upkeep of the household? Ikaw ba ay recipient ng mga vouchers mula sa gobyerno? Kasi sa ating mga aplikante, 55% ay merong transfer history and mas maraki sa ating applicant base ay galing sa private school. And if you look at it deeper, those who transfer, many of those who transfer in the private schools are coming from, they came from public schools na hindi kaya mag-offer na senior high school tracks na interested sila. So marami dyan galing sa mga national high schools na public tas lilipat sa mga private schools kasi yung interest nila like sa STEM hindi available sa school nila na ng junior high so that explains why ang dami-daming private school applicants pag tiningnan mo deeper galing sila sa private tapos ang dami sa kanila recipient ng voucher scholar merit scholar ibig sabihin galing sa scholastic aptitude ang scholarship hindi financial need di ba so may mga ganun kami so part yon kaya yon seryosohin niyo na at saka 
pag pag hindi pag pag hindi kayo seryosong magsagot doon at haphazard yung sinagot hihingi naman kami ng proof later on eh patay ka pag hindi mo nabigay yung proof <laughs> <laughs> dapat truthful sir no dapat, dapat yeah truthful. honor yeah. honor and excellence sa UP yeah. honor muna before excellence talaga honor 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 yes all right so thank you so much sir and meron po dito sir um Medyo ano to, tricky question. Sabi niya, what if some applicants choose a non-quota course to easily get into UP when they don't even like the course? What will happen to those who truly want to study those courses? Uh, okay. Um, life is not fair. Right? Um, yung, mga, yung, mga na, yung mga pumunta sa kursong hindi nila gusto, the university has its way of weeding them out eventually. Dahil sa um, demand sa academic uh, excellence, di ba? Na 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 without sila eh, without without conscious effort from the, di ba? Parang parang mag, parang systemic yung sistema, yung UP itself, the system of learning, the, the the system of academic training in UP will eventually trim out these people who have hazardly chosen their courses. and then eventually gets kicked out of it. Diba? Yung iba dyan may change of heart. They learn to love. They get to learn to love the courses they chose not in the beginning, eh, haphazardly chosen. But there is a strong likelihood na many of them will eventually get out of that course, either by choice or by circumstance. Diba? Yung by choice, lilipat siya talaga... Na, kung talagang pinagginalingan niya, hindi niya mahal yung kurso, pero ginalingan niya for the purpose of makatransfer siya sa, mas ma, sa gusto niyang kurso, well and good. Pero yung iba na dahil wala yung puso niya dun at all at wala na ring effort, ay goodbye UP yan. Mag-goodbye UP yan. Yung mga estudyante naman na sayang, hindi nakapasok. No? Try your best because kung talagang magaling ka, you will find a way to enter the university or the university will find a way to welcome you. Okay? Either as a transfer student, a graduate student, or a faculty in the future. Dating na, nariyan ang universidad at handa kang tanggapin kapag handa ka na rin. Diba? So, ganun yun eh. There's a convergence of, of destiny on the, on, the, on the part of UP and the part of whoever wants to get embraced by UP So sa simula, maaring hindi, pero hindi yan katapusan ng mundo. Ang daming galit na mails, emails ako na-receive last time, hate emails. Um, from parents, from students, <laughs> ang dami, from all fronts. And what, what I always tell them is, stop crying, pick yourself up. No? If your UP material, fight for it. Time will come that you will get into the university and you will prove us wrong. Diba? Kasi ang UP student ay matibay at maparaan. Darating ang, para, ang panahon, papasok at papasok ka rin sa university. So, ganun yun. No? Doon sa mga hindi nakapasok, kung talagang disidido mag-UP, magta-transfer din yan. Magta-transfer in yan. Diba? Kung disidido mag-UP, mag-a-appeal yan. We'll bring heaven and earth together just to enter through appeals. Hindi man mag-appeal sa UPLB. It will, that person will appeal in UPOU. And some of them, through their adamant uh, <laughs> desire, no, they even write university officials. Pero siyempre, bababa rin naman sa amin yan nila, Ma'am Marge. <laughs> so, so, pero again, dahil hindi nila alam kung ano yung, yung avenues no ba, for entry. right? Pero yun, ganun lang yung iniisip ko. Doon sa mga hindi na lumaban, baka talagang hindi na nila, hindi, nagbago na isip nila. Ayaw na nilang pamasok sa university. So what will happen to those who did not get through these courses, lumaban sila, ipaglaban nila yung, yung desire nila. Yung iba na would just want to have a, a peaceful college life, siguro mag apply lang sila sa ibang university. And then later on, the fire will come back. Eh. Pagka-transfer yan. Thank you, sir. Medyo kanilabutan yeah. ako doon. <laughs> Kasi, opo, sir, talagang yung disappointment, no? Kung talagang hindi ka makapasa. Mm. Like, yung speaker po natin nung first day, si Sir Chico, valedictorian, but he was not able to get into UP kasi quota course yata yung pinili niya. Nag-waitlist, hindi rin tinanggap. So, ang ginawa niya, sir, ay ano po siya? 
nag um, transfer nag ano muna siya 33 academic units from from a school and then nag transfer sa UPLB oh, because see? he wanted to be in UPLB so ibang laban <laughs> Ipa, oh ibang laban laban lang lagi sabi ko sa, pa, ang tawag ko diyan ano eh uh, parang the answer will come in a whisper at yung bubulong na yan si oblation yon tinatawag ka na niya Parang ganun. Thank you so much, sir. So, once again, kung hindi makapasa, just in case, hindi ka makuha, there are other two ways. You can uh, wait list and then you can also transfer. So, um, in connection with that, ito po kay Mamarge na, na po itong uh, question. Is the recon appeal for UPO LB only applies to those who prioritize it as their first choice? Ah, uh, okay. Well, um... In the past, ganun nga. Pero we have yet to decide kung anong magiging uh, minimum requirements namin for this coming, no, 2022. So, uh, there's nothing, ra- I cannot comment on that right now. Pero, uh, we'll find out, no, pag announce namin ng, ano, yung minimum requirements for reconsideration uh, when the time comes. All right. So, step by step po, no? Step by step, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, college admission process muna, tapos... Pag talagang hindi, waitlist and then transfer. Mag, maglalabas naman po ang OUR ng mga mga requirements kasi mag-announce kami. <laughs> All right. So Tapos ano siya, ano kung talaga ano, master. Yes po. Graduate program. Di ba? Oh, tama, may, tama. Oo. Ayun po andito si Sir Chico. <laughs> yung ating kong <laughs> speaker nung first day na talagang yung minamahal niya ay pinaglaban, di ba sir? <laughs> oh, di ba? <laughs> All right. So, uh, mas radikal magmahal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. All right, yung mga Kota courses po makikita niyo po yan sa ating prospectus na post na din po natin sa ating FB Live, yung ating prospectus. So you can download that para alam niyo po na Kota course sa first choice, sa second choice, yeah. medyo hindi mo na hindi na Kota course, mga ganun po. And then please also be reminded na ang UP Diliman they don't Um, accept uh, waitlist and recon. Am I right, sir? And Sir Kiko, ano po? Um, and then, ano yan? Um, uh, nililigawan. <laughs> nililigawan namin kasi merong, um, merong, kasi merong kaming plano at mamayang hapon um, imimit ko yung ITDs. Sorry. For the architecture of this plan, um, Uh, merong napag-usapan kasi ang mga university registrars and uh, OVPAA uh, on how to manage the appeals. Pero i-announce i- i- pa namin yun later on. At dito sa planong ito, baka, <laughs> baka mag-ease up ang desisyon ng, ng diliman. Kasi, uh, <laughs> TBA yan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kaya, kaya TBA yan. Kaya mag tba yan naka-TBA. Magkakaroon yan ng Uh, um, earth shaking uh, <laughs> kasi talagang for the longest time eh, di ba? walang appeal walang recon ang diliman pero siya lang yung ganun this time with this automation that uh, the URs have kindly agreed on together with us uh, we hope to 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 bring forth uh, some a major improvement no? para lang ma Puno, ma- makapag-welcome tayo ng mas maraming freshies sa UP system. Alright. Abangan nyo yan, guys. Ha? Um, Sir Kiko uh, and his team will keep you posted. Don't forget yeah. to ano then to follow mm-hmm. their page, yung ating UP Admissions, pa- uh, yeah. UP Admissions Office na Facebook page. Kapag need ng, ng help, nandun po yung kanilang uh, helpline, yung mga handang tumulong sa inyo at sumagot sa inyo mga questions. Alright. And siguro sir, last question. Ito po yung pinaka-last question natin sa mga sinan. Gusto ko pa. Gusto niyo pa sir? <laughs> Wait, ano ba? May level lang pala to. Ano? <laughs> Ay sir, ito po pala. What will I do apo, What will I do next after submitting the form 1 and 2B? Uh, wala na. Patiently wait for the results. Ayan, okay. patiently wait. And trust the system. Trust the system. Okay po. And then... Is it possible daw po to still have online or to to have online upcut next year if hindi po face to face? Okay. Um the magnitude of an online upcut um seems impractical for UP because we have 100 tabanggit nga 137k applicants, di ba? 
we handle the law entrance test 1000 applicants lang ang hirap ang hirap i proctor uh, grabe ang technical glitches kahit uh, meron meron tayong uh, system na ginagamit so ang conclusion namin sa office is it's not feasible for us to roll it up and scale uh, roll it out and scale it up to the magnitude of 137 dahil hindi mo rin kayang itignan yung maraming estudyante na wala rin online access. So this enfranchisement pa ang mangyayari diyan. Uh, remember ang UP ay nananagot sa Board of Region uh, sa sa House of Rep Representatives at saka sa Senate, no? Ang ating ang ating major uh, critic ay ang Kongreso. So pag may tay meron tayong hindi na serbisyohan sa sa ating bansa uh, kailangan nating sagutin itong mga tanong na to and um, this enfranchisement is one that we avoid kasi gusto natin is democratize access to the university so ang aming ang aming panalangin ay sana maging stable ang public health situation natin we will devise a face to face upcut uh, possibly with a longer for uh, season season longer upcut season kasi di ba sanay tayo na weekend lang isang weekend lang upcut eh So mag-iisip na nakalagay na yung mga proposals ano-ano yung mga posible at isa diyan ay longer upcut season no tapos maraming test center sa bawat probinsya ngayon kasi 95 test centers tayo sa buong Pilipinas dadamihan natin yun kasi physical distancing di ba baka ikalat namin sa ibang elementary schools or ibang public high schools dadamihan na lang yung proctors, di ba? Dadamihan. So, handa naman ang universidad na i-bankroll yan. Kasi commitment naman natin sa bayan yon. Hindi natin titipirin yan kasi para sa bayan yan. So, hihingi tayo ng pera sa kongreso, hihingi tayo ng pera sa CHED para mabigyan natin ito ng tamang atensyon para maibigay natin yung test, ma-deliver natin sa lahat yung test. So, parang out of the question po ang online test. Pero, sisikapin ng UP in coordination with IATF and the Philippine National Police uh, para magkaroon tayo ng upcut na face-to-face -face with minimum health standards. Alright, thank you, sir. So, abangan po natin yan. Maybe, abangan. Ma maybe that's the case din po, sir, sa face-to-face -face classes, no? Kasi talagang inaabangan din nila kung may face-to-face -face classes tayo. <laughs> ang lupet ng ano, ah. Ang lupet ng inspections. All right. And then, sir, how long daw po yung process of checking of all the information of um, aspiring ISCO and ISCA dun sa kanilang um, application? Function siya ng number ng applicants, ha? Tandaan natin, last year, 100,292. Nagsimulang application January 7, nilabas namin July 15. Uh, ano lang, uh, lulunok kami ng bato? <laughs> <laughs> para magkaroon kami ng superpowers para matapos namin uh, in time for early registration next year. We, we will not commit this publicly but internally we have already talked about our internal deadlines uh, na, na fair sa Office of Admission at in consideration of the schedules of the different CUs with respect to registration. So, so sisikapin ng, ng mga kawani ng Office of Admission, humingi na ako ng clearance sa UP, nadagdagan ng kaunti yung aming, aming um, manpower para ma-process na. So, we will, we will do our best na mailabas yan bago talaga magkaroon ng pagbubukas ng klase sa lahat ng paaralan. Alright. Sir, thank you so much for your time po. Siguro yung yung pinakahuli na lang pong itatanong ay yung inyong final message sa ating mga nanonood ngayon. I, I, alam ko po na rigorous yung pagdadaanan ng lahat ng application, mm. but why still UP, UP ang kailang, kailang piliin o ipaglaban? So siguro po, si Ma Marge muna and then uh, yeah. uh, si Sir Kiko. Ma Marge, any final message to our uh, participants? Uh, sent, uh, so final message ko is to just do your best. No? Uh, study well. Uh, either way, um, you will get the results that you've probably uh, been expecting. So, yan lang, uh, just study well and just pray for the best. No? Uh, yan lang. Yeah. Thank you, Mama Marge. Sir Kiko? 
ako naman um your grades are already there eh. there's nothing more you can do diba grades 8 9 10 11 officially belong to the past right but there are the, they will be the basis for our admission but trust in the system that whatever the outcome of the upka it has undergone a rigorous process it underwent a system uh, kung, hin, kung itong ang, ang result ay to your favor be thankful and grateful but it did not come out to your favor just think that the the university looks at all the segments of our our society no so you maaring sa ngayon hindi ikaw yung napili pero isipin mo na merong isa na nasa malayong na yon na baka walang opportunity mag-aral tapos nabigyan ng opportunity di ba at um kung ikaw naman sa palagay mo ang taong yon at hindi ka nag-qualify, sumulat ka lang. Magbigay ka ng appeal. Lumaban ka doon sa, sa sistemang nag-generate ng seemingly unfavorable uh, outcome na iyon. So explore opportunities. Explore um, ways of getting into the university. Um, at lagi namang student-centric ang university. Eh. We always listen. So if you find merit, Diba? through your appeal, eventually you'll get the acceptance you dream of. So uh, uh, it's always, ano, it's always uh, a nail biter whenever the upka is being um, rumored to be released. Diba? Halos mag-crash <laughs> ang mga websites kapag lalabas na ang resulta ng UP College admission. Dahil talaga well anticipated eh. For some, it is the, the final ticket or the great leveler in terms of economic situation. Diba? It's, a, a, it's a major way of leveling yourself in society and lifting yourself up. So uh, we understand the, the aspiration. No? We, we understand the aspiration. And uh, when, when time comes that uh, the, the, the results are released, uh, just think about that system that processed your application. There is definitely excellence and equity involved. We have bias-free assessment of your grades. So a rule was set and it was approved. So accept it, but explore ways if the outcome was not to your favor. All right, there uh, you oh, have. Yeah, yeah, ang hirap kasi, di ba? 137 applicants, as ilan lang tatanggapin natin? 13.8%. Dumadami taon-taon, dumadami ang aplikante, pero ganun pa rin naman talaga yung kaya ng university. Di ba? At the end of it all, while, while intelligence is normally distributed, opportunities are not. So UP would try to find ways also to lift people with the potential for these opportunities. So think na natin in that particular sense. All right, there you have it, guys. Professor Francisco N. De Los Reyes, the Director of UP uh, Admissions Office, and of course, our very own University Registrar, um, Marge Paterno. Thank you so much for both of you po, for your time. We're so blessed to have you po in this in this wonderful webinar that we have. So, sana po sa uulitin, sabi po ni Sir JN. All right, so, sobrang dami nating natutunan, guys, no? kay Sir Kiko at kay Ma'am Marge. San, ako po personally na, na uplift sa mga words na sinabi nila. Uh, I hope yung ating mga future is ko is ka, ganun din ang kanilang mga naramdaman na wala yung mga agam-agam dahil nalinawan tayo sa ating mga katanungan, ano? sa ating mga pangamba. All right, so just um, to have some icebreaker, ano, i-congratulate lang po muna namin yung nanalo po sa selfie challenge <laughs> last day one. Ay, ayan pala, ang reminders po natin, college admissions uh, deadline, November 30, 2021, sabi ni Sir, basta maipasok mo na yan sa no ng November 30 kahit to follow na yung iyong mga um, hard copies or alam naman nila na dadating yung hard copies so basta uh -huh. maipasok mo siya November 30. Right, Sir? <laughs> Yes, yes. All right. And then, congratulations sa ating mga selfie challenge winners for day one. Si Arian mag 
Magluyan. Ayan. I will definitely visit my course building. I want to explore different facilities in UPLD. Since the last time I visited there was just to take pictures of the environment and to participate in activity. Congratulations, PM mo kami, Arian, ha, ng iyong GCash number para maibigay ng aming um, napaka-generous na incoming director, <laughs> Sir Jaya Mambata, yung inyong, fresh, ay, yung inyong prize. Second, I see Josh Pinulyar. Aba, yung mahakot ng prize si Josh. Gusto ko po talagang makalapit kay Pegarao. Kaya that is the first thing that I would do. Ayan. Thank you so much for those who uh, answered the question for day one and for posting your selfies. Meron pa rin kayong chance today. Ha? Nakapost na yung ating um, publicity material sa ating selfie challenge for today. At ang ating question for today ay... Ayan. Mag-selfie a groupie habang nanonood ng Nowhere to Go But Up. At sagutin ang ating question. Again, pipili kami ng limang. Winning entries and best selfies. Ang ating tanong for today, day two, ay anong course o degree program sa UP Los Banyos ang pipiliin mo at bakit? Ayan, mag-comment na po kayo sa ating um, Facebook page. Nandun na po yung ating thread. Feel free to, uh, to, to, to post your selfies and use the hashtag nowhere to go but up and LRCRPBB. So, meron tayong Um, konting icebreaker lang to ha. Tatlong questions lang, paunahan lang po. Nandyan pa ba? <laughs> Nandyan pa po ba kayo sa ating Facebook Live? Mag-ingay lamang po kayo dyan. Meron tayong game na ang tawag ay Anino Nino, courtesy ng ating um, beautiful and very um, tawag ito, masipag na SA na si Clarice. So ang gagawin lang po, hulaan kung ano yung, kaninong anino yung ipapakita sa screen. Yung pinakamabilis po na makakahula at tama ang sagot, Again, may premium matatanggap mula sa Team LRC courtesy of our incoming director, Sir JM M. Bate. Ready na? Ready na? <laughs> Pabilisan po ha sa ating Facebook page. All right, First, anino? <laughs> first question. Yan! Kaninong anino daw yan? Dito yan sa UPLB. Mag-chat na po kayo sa ating Facebook page, or sa ating Facebook Live kung ano ang sagot. Meron po bang nakakaalam kung ano ito? Tawag dyan. <laughs> Anong tawag dito? <laughs> alam mo, hindi ko alam tawag dyan. Parang may picture dyan. <laughs> Talaga po, sir. Meron na po bang nag- Hindi ko alam yung official name eh. Ako rin eh, hindi ko alam. <laughs> kahit, kahit pa alumni, sige, magsagot na kayo. Ayan, meron na tayong winner, si Altea. Nahuli si Sir Chico. <laughs> Actually, ito po ay um, famously known sa ating mga students na Quick Quick Tower. Pero ang tunay po niyang pangalan ay Academic Heritage Tower. Pero kung oh. tower is accepted. Okay? Miss niyo na po ba yan? <laughs> Nandyan po yung reindeer natin ngayong year. <laughs> Alright, second question. Second question. Kaninong anino to? Malapit na sa amin sa Student Union Building. Kaninong anino to? Pabilisan po ng sagot sa ating Facebook Live. Ayan, na na- <laughs> may nanalo na po tayo, nakikisali sa Sir Chico. <laughs> Sige na nga, siya si Mariang Banga. ba? Diba? Yung sinasabi po nila na legendary na nagpapalit-palit ng pwesto. Pero hindi naman talaga, nakababalat na. Pag mga November, sir, mga scary stories. Ay, ganun. Kala ba after ng exam, iba tingin mo sa kanya? <laughs> Mariyang bangag. Mariyang <laughs> bangag tuloy. Oh, yeah. Funny, sir. Nanigasin siya ko doon. Alright, third and last. Ayan, congratulations, Sir Chico, for winning the, ano, the second question, yung tamang answer. Third and last. Ayan. Kanino po itong? Anino. Paunahan po sa Facebook Live natin. O winner yan. Sino po? Or kaninong anino ito? Alright! Congratulations, John Lloyd Belen. Pegarao. Si Pegarao. Uh. Kay Pegarao. Ayan. Nasa ano po yan? Nasa tapat ng ating university library. Pegarao. Congratulations, John Lloyd, kay Mark, at saka kay Alcia. Thank you for, for participating. So, hindi pa tayo tapos ha? Kasi... College admission pa lang yung ating diniscuss, no? yung UPCA pa lang. Meron pa tayong 
mga opportunities na kailangang malaman or mga scholarship opportunities na kailangang malaman. So, let's move forward agad sa ating next session which is session 4 entitled Better Together, UPLB Scholarships, Financial Assistance and Other Services. Now, kung nag-wonder ka kung ano ba yung mga pwede mong uh, pasukang scholarship, ito na. Ito na yung mga details para sa iyo. So, for the first part of our session 4, to discuss about scholarships and financial assistance, here with us is the Assistant to the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and the Director as well of the Office of Scholarships and Grants. He is also an Assistant Professor from the Genetics and Molecular Bio Biology Division, Institute of Biological Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences here in UPLB. Let's please welcome in the Zoom space, Assistant Professor Jigerson Pilado. Sir Jigs, good morning. Magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, thank you very much sa Learning Resource Center sa pag na po sa Office of Scholarships and Grants. Uh, it's a very tough act to follow yung ating pong discussion with uh, Sir Kiko and Ma'am Marge on admission. I think highly hype ang ating 90 million viewers or 80 million viewers na nasa Facebook page ngayon. Um, this time, ako naman po ay mag-discuss about uh, scholarships and opportunities kasi baka iisipin nyo, Bakit ba ako mag-UP? Ba't ako mag-UPLB? Kakayanin ko ba? Kahit free tuition, kaya ko bang makapag-aral? Uh, especially during this time of the pandemic, pipiliin ko pa rin bang makapag-college at UP-UPLB pa ang pipiliin ko? So these are some of the questions. no? And to start po my our uh, presentation, no? I will be giving you or I will be telling you a... Ayan po. I will be telling you a story. So, unahan natin to with uh, two tales of Iskot Iska. So, pabilisan lamang po na kwento. Um, tawagin po natin yung unang kwento na sila Dina at Sirina. Si Dina at Sirina kasi geneticists ako, DNA and RNA. <laughs> Pero hindi po nila totoong pangalan. Sila po ay galing sa Libon Albay. Mga magkapatid na talaga pong galing sa low household income of about 80,000 or, or less pa talaga yung um, um, na, nakukuha ng pamilya nila. No? Pero dahil nagpursige si Dina at Rina, nag-take sila ng upkat nung pre-pandemic po, nag-take sila ng upkat at na, uh, nakapasa no? at tumira po dito na malapit sa lugar ng Los Panos at nagpapatuloy. Si Dina ay naging BS Agriculture at si Dina ay BS Human Ecology. Kasulukuin po silang mga beneficiary ng ating uh, uh, tinatawag na student financial assistance no or ngayon dahil sa pandemya student learning assistance system. So pakilala natin sila mamaya. Ang isa pong storya pa ay ang storya ni ang storya ni Kiko. So si Kiko, um, anak siya ng isang public school teacher at isang magsasaka, pinili niyang kumuha ng BS Agriculture na may konting grants mula sa Department of Education no? or uh, DEX pa po yata nung una. At nung siya ay nasa kolehiyo, siya ay naging uh, isang student assistant para may dagdag uh, na makita kumbaga, or income na makakapagtustos para sa kanyang mga ilang gagamitin sa pag-aaral. So sino nga ba sila Dina, Rina? Sino nga ba si Kiko? No? So si Dina at si Rina, sila po ang mga Lubaton sisters. Uh, may consent po ito with their pictures. Sila ay under ng ating tinatawag na student learning assistance. Ito po ay student financial assistance system ng University of the Philippines system kung saan ay... Uh, inaalam po ng, 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 ng UP kung sino po ba sa ating mga estudyante yung nasa low household income at saka low household characteristics na nasa vulnerable na economy and environment para mas matugunan at mabigyan sila ng, 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 ng assistance or grants ng university. No? Yan po ay pera ng taong bayan. So, um, in, 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 minambuti po natin makita at masilap kung sino po ang mga estudyante na talaga pong nangangailangan ng tulong, lalo higit ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Ang kwento naman po ni Kiko ay si Sir Nick. So, this is Mr. Nicholas Nick A. 
Angel, nung siya po ay nag, uh, nakatapos, siya naman po ay donor na natin ngayon. So ito po yung isang magandang kwento ng, uh, ng paying it forward na nung matulungan siya ng universidad, ay ngayon siya naman po ang aming isa sa mga donor kasi Mr. Lee na siyang uh, parang uh, startup na agricultural company. No? Isang maliit na agricultural company. So ito po yung mga storya na nagpapakita na pwede na pag pinili mo ang UP, pag pinili mo ang UPLB, hindi, hindi lingid po ang inyong uh, financial na mga na mga kakulangan no yung financial constraint nyo para mag, mag, magkaroon tayo ng UP education. So to start, ano nga po ba ang opisina na talagang mukha ng pagbibigay ng financial at learning assistance sa universidad? So ito po yung Office of Scholarships and Grants na nagsimula noong 1978 bilang isang division under Office of the Student Affairs na ngayon po ay nag-elevate na into an Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at kasabay na niya ang pag-elevate na bilang isang Office of Scholarships and Grants. Tututok na po natin na tingitugunan ang mga pangangailangang pinansyal, no? lalo na ngayong pong panahon para sa ating mga estudyante. So to, uh, to give you an overview of the different programs that we have in UP, UPLB specifically, who under po nung Office of Scholarship and Grants ay may director's office and we are managing this program, yung grants in aid program, yung student assistantship program, private and government scholarship, loans and claims because of the insurance system. At alam nyo po na pag pumasok kayo sa UP, insured po kayo for any accident. No? So accident, meron po kayong accident insurance. Just to give you, uh, pa, sa lahat po ng success ng uh, office ay ang mga tao sa likod nito. So maraming maraming salamat sa staff. So under the director's office, tayo po ang nabigyan ng... Uh, <laughs> ng task no or ng responsibilidad at para bigyan ng overview yung mga services na pwede niyo pong makuha pag pumasok po kayo pinili niyo yung UP pinili niyo yung UPLB nakapasok kayo free tuition po kayo base sa RA10931 universal access to quality tertiary education so wala po kayong babayarang tuition no starting kung kayo po ay nag-apply ngayong 2021 nakapasa ng 2022 batch 2022 free po kayo pero syempre lahat ng 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 edukasyon no ng, ng mga paghihirap ng mga projects may mga ka, may mga kailangan ka pa ring tustusin no kasabay ng iyong pag-aaral at ng iyong edukasyon so meron po tayo again grants in aid program ito po ay nagbibigay ng 5000 monthly stipend so technically sa loob ng limang buwan sa isang semestre nakakakaroon ka ng 25000 no pandagdag for your allowance no grants po siya gratis so thank you po siya wala po yang grade technically kapag grants in aid program okay Kapag naman po kayo ay nag-enjoy sa college, <laughs> hindi na po kayo cover or eligible for tw free tuition, papasok po yun sa student loans. Pwede po kayo mag-apply ng, uh, ng uh, uh, mag-student loan no? under the student loan board para hindi muna bayaran ng inyong tuition uh, sa latter part na lang po kapag nakaluwag-luwag na. So meron, pwede po yun. Pwede rin naman po na magkaroon ng cash loans na worth 5,000 to 8,000. No? Uh, i-discuss mo natin yan in great details. Now, yung mga private and government scholarships nag-range ang kanyang monthly stipend ng 2 to 7,000 depende po sa mga available natin na private and government scholarships. At ang isa lang po namin na minimake sure ay wala pong return service. No? Naka-commit naka, naka or when we partner or collaborate with different donors and um, uh, institutions, talagang minimake sure namin na talagang mag-aaral lamang kayo at hindi kayo nakatali sa kung anumang agreement with your donors or partners. And lastly, ito po yung isa sa pinakagusto din natin na habang kayo po ay nag-aaral, ay kayo kumikita at ginawa ng paraan ng UPLB sa sa mga nauna po na naka-work from home set up ang student assistantship natin. So pwede kayong nasa bahay at kayo po ay nag-render ng services. So you can earn as much as 7,200 every, uh, every month. No? for under the SA program. So yun po yung overview para lang makita nyo. So muli, gratis, grants in aid program. Ang gusto lamang pong sabihin, meron po tayong student learning assistance system. Um, although free, under na po tayo ng free tuition, ito po pa rin yung magbibigay sa atin ng programa para uh, tingnan at i-qualify kung papasok kayo na mabigyan ng stipend. So ito po yung mag-check mag mag kung pwede kayong maka-avail ng discounts kung hindi na kayo covered ng free tuition or kung pwede kayong bigyan ng financial assistance through monthly stipend. Yun po yung nakita nyo kanina. So 
with the with the pandemic isa pa pong involve at ginawa ng sistema ay matulungan kayo sa pagbibigay ng gadget. Nakita niyo po sila Regine at saka si Rosan Lubaton nakatanggap po sila ng iPod, gadgets at internet connectivity subsidy na patuloy po natin ginagawa hanggang sa kasalukuyan dahil naka-remote learning pa rin po ang unibersidad. At yung kaagapay po, ito po ay isang programa ng system kung saan nag-pour in yung mga donors natin para makabili ng mga gadgets no? at connectivity assistance sa ating mga estudyante. So ayun nga po, ang, pinaka, ang gusto po natin matulungan yung mga pinaka-vulnerable na family or household ng mga UP students natin. Ayan. So ito lamang po yung criteria for that kung kayo po ay below 85,000 talaga yung household, no? kayo po ay pwedeng full discount tapos you can get 5,000 monthly stipend and automatic pwede kayo makatanggap ng gadget and internet connectivity. Kung kayo po ay between 85 to 135 ang household, this is full discount, wala na kayong babayaran. At the same time, you can avail of the internet connection subsidy and the rest would proceed. So partial na lang po, depende sa household income and characteristic. The system, the UUP system has developed no, a system-wide program or isang portal para doon po mag-submit once UP students na po tayo. At starting first year, pwede na po siya. So sa scholarships, again, ang sinasabi natin, wala po kami ini-incur na obligations, walang return service. It can be UPLB administered or UP Deliman. We have close coordination with UP Deliman kasi at times po yung mga donors and partners sa UP system po nilalagay yung kontrata or yung agreement pero binibigyan po ng slots ang mga UPLB students. So wag po kayo magtaka at times that UP, UP Deliman Office of Scholarship and Grants mag, magpo sila na a UPLB student yung kailangan BS Agriculture, BS Forest. At marami po tayong UP, UPLB administered scholarship, please visit this website, uplbosa.org slash scholarships. We have a list there no, ng mga scholarships available for our students. Ayan. So yung ADAPA student, ito po ay homemade ng UPLB. No, dahil po may ilan na mga estudyante na dahil siguro nahirapan, na incomplete or na bumaba ang grades or GWA, ay pero kailangan pa rin niya ng scholarship. Yung ADAPA student, uh, it helps again our less fortunate but deserving students o kaya na, nahirapan sa mga courses, nagkaroon ng uh, uh, bagsak pero magaling pa din mataas pa rin naman ang jiwa ito yung mga ito yung karam pinaka fallback para hindi ka pa rin mawala ng scholarship adapt a student program and we're thankful dumadami po ang ating mga donors no for this this uh, program yung UPLB cares po ay flagship program ng ating uh, vice chancellor for student affairs of Janet Silva and Chancellor Camacho yung with the pandemic ito po yung ating UPLB cares na binibig na nangangalap ng donation from different um, institutions uh, private entities and organizations para po magbigay ng mga kahit second hand laptop o kaya brand new laptops or mga uh, money po talaga na ibibigay para magka-load ang ating mga estudyante so lahat ng level UP system UPLB ginagawan po ng paraan para ma-provide namin kayo ng uh, ng assistance na kailangan niyo. Loans as I have mentioned um isa po sa pinaka-importante ngayon yung insurance once you are enrolled in UP, UPLB, you are insured sa isang group accident insurance no. So kung kayo po ay mahabang nagre-remote learning sa bahay ay dulas na balian you 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 incurred you, you incurred medical expenses because of that accident, kagat ng aso, kagat ng kung ano man po. So if these are accidents you can actually um, claim something because of the new UP student insurance policy kapag under po kayo ng free tuition. Ayan. So yung, again, may tuition loan at saka may cash loan. Na-mention na natin yung tuition loan kanina na pwede kayong mag-apply ng student loan board para wag munang bayadan yung tuition nyo kung hindi na kayo under free tuition. So pwede pong latter part na lamang yon bayaran habang nag-aaral kayo. Or kung hirap din kayo na wala kayong allowance, pwede rin po kayong mag-apply for CLAP, the Cash Loan Assistance Program. Pwede kayong pahiramin ng 5,000 muna for the whole semester or 8,000 depending on your eligibility po. Ito po ay galing din sa iba natin mga donors and partners na pinapaikot natin yung pera para may, may iba pa pong estudyante at ibang slots na maka, makapag-avail nitong mga services. And lastly, as I have mentioned, sana po ay wag naman natin sanang gamitin pero uh, rest assured uh, kung may mangyari sa inyong aksidente, UP covers that through a GSIS accident insurance. 
And last but not the least, you earn while you learn. You learn while you earn ang student assistantship program or yung pagiging SA. We're happy that through the recommit, yung atin pong communication information technology ay pwede nang gawin yung student assistantship in a work from home setup. So may module po doon sa awesome system kung saan pwede kayong mag-apply, makahanap ng supervisor, mag-communicate with your supervisor online at gawin yung mga tasks online. And you can earn, as we have mentioned, as much as 7,200 pesos per month. So sobrang ma medyo malaking tulong na po yan. Yan po ay on top kung kayo ay FDS na, kung mayroon na kayong grants na, uh, na stipend or kung may scholarship na kayo, okay lang yun kasi yung student assistantship ay pinaghirapan nyo pa siya on top of other scholarship and grants. Okay? So mukhang kaya nyo po talagang mabuhay at gagawa natin ng paraan na matulungan kayo if you really need financial and learning assistance. Ayan po. So please, uh, siguro sec uh, I think the second to the last slide, please visit the website of the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs that is at ovcsa.uplb.edu.ph for financial assistance. Marami po tayong tabs here. Meron din po tayo kapag once you're in UP, you, you, you want to have more of guidance and counseling, may guidance services. If possible, na po uling tumira sa campus, you have the student housing. Meron po tayong nine beautiful dormitories no, na nire-retrofit para ma-reach ma ang minimum public health standards. If you want to be part no, of a student organization and do more non-academic uh, activities or tasks para mas ma-enhance ang leadership skills, meron po tayong Office of Student Activities. So everything is in our website po, ovcsa.uplb.edu.ph. Again, from OSG and from OVCSA, our sincerest gratitude. Please make sure and please remember that a financial constraint is never a hindrance po to attaining UP education. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Sir Jaker. Ayan, nakita nyo na kung gano'ng kadami yung opportunities na meron. Ano? At sabi nga ni Sir, hindi kailangan maging hindrance ang um, financial difficulties. Kasi pag dito ka sa UPLB, Diba? Hindi ka pababayaan. We're one community here, lalong-lalo nandiyan -lalo, ang OVCSA and dito po ang Team LRC at ang UPLB community to support you sa iyong hashtag UPQT journey. Alright? So thank you, Sir Jaker. And if you have questions for Sir Jaker, kindly post lang po sa ating comment section box. I-answer po niya later. Moving forward, we will now go to the second part of our session for Better Together. So tapos na tayo sa scholarships and financial assistance. To discuss about the student services offered by our center, UPLB Learning Resource Center, here with us is our incoming LRC director and an assistant professor at the Department of Educational Communication, College of Development Communication here in UP Los Baños. He graduated BS Development Communication, major in Development Journalism, cum laude, here in UPLB as well. He took his MA in Communication in UP Diliman. Dear friends, please welcome Assistant Professor John Mervyn L. Mbate. Good morning, Sir JM. Good morning, Ate Che, and good morning, Sir Jeker. Thank you po for the very generous introduction. Ayan. Um, I'm very happy to share to all the participants today, yung, uh, including yung mga existing and aspiring UPLB students, yung mga services and activities na ginagawa natin sa Learning Resource Center. Kanina, uh, pinag-usapan natin with Sir Kiko and uh, Ma Marge kung paano ba natin dapat ipaglaban ang UP. Ngayon naman, no, gusto ko namang sabihin kung paano kayo ipaglalaban ng UPLB uh, sa oras na makatuntong kayo dito at makapasok sa ating pamantasan. No? Uh, gusto ko na rin kunin itong opportunity na to, to announce to everyone no, na, that LRC has found its homecoming at the UPLB Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Rightly so, dahil since it was institutionalized back in 1997, uh, the LRC has been mandated to uh, coordinate all learning uh, assistance programs for the university students. No? And 10 years after, in 2007, the LRC was integrated to uh, the Office of Student Activities, or OSA, as the learning resource program. But in 2013, with the efforts of then director Mark Lester Chico, who's here with us today, uh, the UP Board of Regents approved the elevation of the LRP into the Learning Resource Center under the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Ngayon, nga, na, na elevate ang uh, Office of Student Activity, uh, Student 
Office of Student Affairs to OVCSA, LRC will be cradled one more time uh, by the arms of the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, emphasizing that the services of LRC really are for our students. So Josh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, please kindly share the slides. <laughs> Ayan. So uh, still under the OVCSA, LRC remains committed to fulfill its four mandates. The first one being to implement academic-related programs and activities, both for local undergraduate students and international undergraduate and graduate students. Second, to institutionalize and sustain the UPLB recruitment program for the best and the brightest students, or RPBB, which is the umbrella program actually of our current webinar, the Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0. Now, this means that your attendance here is really destined. Uh, we are holding this seminar specifically for you because we want you, senior high school students, to be part of the UPLB community in the future. Third is to provide support services to would-be or international exchange students, including but not limited to customized language programs and thesis in journal writing. And then lastly, LRC is mandated to complement the Office of Institutional Linkages or uh, o OIL, OIL, in facilitating exchange programs that would provide opportunities for students to expose themselves to various programs offered by other competent and esteemed universities in the world. Next slide, please, Josh. Now, as previously mentioned, ang LRC uh, will soon be a unit under the OVCSA headed by the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Dr. Janet Malata Silva, who graciously welcomed uh, our webinar series last Monday. And LRC is composed of four uh, indefatigable staff, Ate She, your host for today, Kuya Josh, Tita Allen, and Kuya Iwok, who <laughs> work tirelessly day in, day out to provide you with only the best programs and activities to support your academic and non-academic learning journey. Next slide, please, Josh. Now, please uh, allow me to discuss, discuss very briefly the different programs that we do here in LRC. Itong mga programang ito ang naghihintay sa inyo at tutulong sa inyo kung sakaling kayo ay makapasok dito sa UPLB. Nauna na sa mga programa natin ang Bridge Program. The Bridge Program aims to provide academic and psychosocial assistance to selected incoming first-year students whose grades in English and Mathematics in high school can still be a little, bet be a little better. Di ba akala natin kapag pumasok tayo sa UP, perfect na tayo, magaling na tayo agad sa lahat. Uh, well, gusto namin itong linawin. Siyempre, may advantage kung magaling na tayo sa iba't ibang aspeto ng pagkatuto, sa iba't ibang mga subject areas. Pero hangad namin na hindi mag-discriminate kung anong uri ka ng sudyante at kung saan ang skill ka or knowledge na e excel so long as qualified ka na nakapasok sa UP, tatanggapin ka namin ng buong buo at tutulungan ka namin na makapag-adjust at makasabay sa iba. In the past, umaabot sa 150 to 200 yung mga incoming freshies na nag undergo sa bridge program. As a matter of fact, the College of Economics and Management also convened its own special bridge program for some freshie students in preparation for their Math 25. Yeah, next slide, please. Ayan, for the past two years, uh, the bridge program is done remotely because of the pandemic. Pero kahit na face-to-face -face yung bridge program, uh, meaningful pa rin ito no? para sa mga students na nakapag-complete ng course at syempre para na rin sa mga tutors na nakakilala ng panibagong students na papasok sa pamantasan. Ang next program naman ng LRC, kagaya ng nasabi ko kanina, ay ang Recruitment Program for the Best and the Brightest, or the RPBB. Uh, this program aims to bring the best and the brightest students of the country to UP Los Baños, and also to invite more students to enroll in three centers of excellence in the, in the university, namely agriculture, forestry, and veterinary medicine. Kagaya nung last Monday, we invited... Uh, 
to be part of our distinguished panel of resource speakers, some of the faculty members from these colleges. Dr. Rosalyn Paelmo from CAFS, Dr. Uh, Rosalie Mendoza from CFNR, and Dr. RJ Dukusin from uh, 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 DVM or the College of Vet Veterinary Medicine who talked about their uh, college, their degree programs, and also offered us some insights on how to choose the best program for uh, UT. Of course, sinama din natin si Sir Enzo Yambot, uh, Dr. Aimee Baryon, and Sir Seth Elige, who shared uh, very helpful information about the Bachelor of uh, Science programs in Statistics, uh, Nutrition, and Human Ecology. Ito yung iba sa mga photos, no? no previous uh, RPDD or yung first installment natin ng Nowhere to Go But Up. Ang next naman natin na program uh, ay yung ARDS o yung Agricultural and Rural Development Scholarship which aims to provide financial assistance and learning opportunities to intellectually deserving students of rural poor families no? and to encourage them to take development-oriented courses in UPLD. So ang mga scholars na uh, dito sa ARDS ay nakaka-receive ng monthly stipend, ng thesis allowance, even medical allowance. At pinoprovide din natin sila ng uh, transportation fee or allowance uh, kapag papunta sila dito sa university. Next slide po. Ayan. So ito, uh, marami tayong mga naging ARDS scholars in the past. Sobrang dami na nila at uh, organized din yung mga ARDS scholars natin. Merong ARDS Scholar Society. Ito yung uh, grupo or organisasyon ng mga arts scholars natin. At meron ding alumni association itong arts na binubuo ng napakaraming uh, arts uh, alumni in the past. No? At talagang sobrang ang pag-aalaga ng uh, LRC para sa mga arts scholars natin. Uh, as a matter of fact, on the day of graduation itself, we hold a luncheon with them and their parents. No? Meron tayong maliit na programa para sa mga arts scholars natin. Yun nga lang, dahil pandemic ngayon at bawal ang mass gathering, naging virtual yung nakaraan nating luncheon para sa kanila. Pero para feel na feel ng mga art scholars natin na sumablay na talaga sila ng tuluyan sa pamantasan, uh, full gear din yung program natin at nakasablay lahat ng umaten doon sa program na to. Ang next natin na program sa LRC ay yung team or Together Everyone Achieves More learning sessions. Itong team, uh, it provides tutorial sessions to UPLB students, no? including yung mga student-led tutorial services natin. Hence, very thankful kami kay Sir Jeker at sa OSG team dahil nagkaroon tayo ng tutors na ating student assistant sa Team LRC. No? Aside from student-led tutorial services, we also invite UPLB profs to, to serve as resource persons no? in, in the tutorial. Halimbawa, next slide please, Josh. In the past, no, uh, meron na tayong mga ginawang tutorial services on mathematics, on chemistry, biology, statistics, and even economics. Yung mga courses na hindi naman may hira, pero parang nasa complicated relationship tayo sa kanila all the time. No? Mahal na mahal natin itong mga subjects na to, pero parang laging one-sided. Para hindi hindi na ano hindi nababalik yung pagmamahal natin sa kanila. So nandito ang LRC, parang guidance, no? Parang guidance sa relationship upang tulungan na maintain niyo ang inyong relationship sa mga challenging subjects na ito. Kaya nga next week, no, magkakaroon tayo ng math tutorials, uh, called Math Dali lang ang math. So mamaya papakita ko kung hindi pa kayo nag-register, pwedeng-pwede kayo mag-register dito sa ating webinar na to. Kahit mga senior high school students, pwedeng-pwede. Next slide, Josh. Uh, LRC has also started to uh, uh, to train no uh, people who do some request or uh, request assistance from the office. Kasama dito yung customized training programs natin, which is designed to implement uh, needs-based training programs to various stakeholders, primarily UPLB students, faculty members, and staff. Meron din tayo mga tinatanggap ng mga requests for training coming from agencies or institutions outside UP Los Banos. Ang play naman, 
or the providing learning alternatives to the youth, no? um, it's, it's a program of LRC which attempts to explore ways on how to enhance the learning experience of UPLB students uh, through the production of open educational resources, including audiovisual presentations, board games, and activities. No? And Team LRC is planning to partner with various local institutions here in UPLB to uh, improve our services no? to uh, provide learning alternatives to our students. So, naiisip na namin dito to partner with the Office of Student Activities no? and the College of Development Communication. So, hintay tayo doon sa uh, mga future programs or activities under play. And then, uh, lastly, no, uh, meron din tayong uh, LRC CARES. No? Ito yung very active engagement natin on social media. CARES, which stands for Creative Activities, Recreational and Educational Services. No? And this program takes advantage of the fact that everyone now is in social media. No? Ito yung parang uh, byproduct ng pandemic. Lahat tayo ngayon ay nakatuon, nakatungtong, and we occupy space in social media. Uh, UPLB, or LRC Cares rather, is, is LRC's way to reach out to our students and other constituents to make them feel that we are here for them and we are with them as together we survive the daily challenges of the pandemic. No? Kaya nga, uh, next slide please, Josh. In response to the global crisis, the center takes on the challenge of offering different programs to our students through uh, online platforms. Example nito yung mga online webinars natin on statistics, data visualization, analysis, and management featuring Sir Enzo from the Institute of Statistics. Uh, Nag-offer din tayo ng mga online webinars para makatulong makapag-adjust ang mga learners natin sa online learning. And of course, no lahat ito ay nangyayari through our LRC Facebook page, no? Na just like what Atisha said earlier today, no, ay growing yung ating community. Uh, sa Facebook page natin sina-share natin yung uh, very important messages or announcements coming from the university. Pero nagbibigay din kami dito ng mga meaningful opportunities para sa mga stakeholders and constituents ng university kung paano nga ba maging productive, paano makatulong na uh, makomfort sa panahon na tayo ay uh, ina-anxious during the pandemic at kung paano ba tayo maging healthy no? uh, para matugunan natin hindi man, hindi man lang yung ating mga academic responsibilities pero yung mga activities at iba pa nating gampanin sa ating buhay. Uh, aside from that, just like what I said, no, ito yung mga uh, online webinars that we have conducted in the past. Ayan, so uh, it's featuring uh, no less than the OPR director, Prof. Uh, Mark Lester Chico. No? Paano ba tayo pwedeng um, maging screenshot ready? So ito naman para sa mga faculty members ng university. No? How do we make our online uh, instruction a meaningful performance? No? Just like what I said, no, we offer some on, uh, online webinars on how to uh, be mindful, on how to protect and stay sane during the pandemic. Ito yung mga webinars na bahagi ng unplug natin. And uh, uh, on top of the non-academic uh, webinars that we hold, of course, uh, gusto nating suportahan higit lalo no, yung academic uh, performance ng ating mga students. So kagaya na nabanggit ko kanina, no, we also held uh, statistics at a webinars no on how to uh, use basic statistical tools no and other techniques when uh, students are doing their research sige po next slide josh ayan so ito yung mga other uh, activities or webinars that we held in the past no and kung makikita natin very varied sila no uh, at nagkikater sila sa iba't ibang pangangailangan ng mga students because just like what I, I said a while ago, no, ito ay needs-based. Nagpapasurvey kami kung ano yung mga topics na maaring makatulong doon sa mga students natin. At ito rin naman yung mga 
tinutugunan natin ng mga webinars. Uh, yeah, just like what I said, no, yung how to uh, keep yourself healthy, both physically and mentally at the same time. Ngayon, kagaya ng nasabi ko kanina, um, para sa mga uh, viewers natin ngayon, kung uh, gusto nyo pang matuto or gusto nyo pang mahalin lalo kayo ng mathematics, no? maaari kayo mag-join sa aming uh, tutorial on mathematics starting next week. No? So it's a, a whole week event no? uh, beginning on November 29. This, November 30 is a holiday, so wala tayong session doon. Uh, and then on December 1, geometry yung i-discuss natin. On December 2, ay trigonometry. At noong December 3, ay calculus. No? Uh, gusto ko rin umaten kasi pakiramdam ko ay marami din ako matututunan dito. Kagaya, kagaya nating lahat. So yun lamang po. No? Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook kung hindi nyo pa siya nalalike. No? Uh, Uh, we have, uh, as a growing community, we already have 78,000 follower, uh, likes and more than 80 followers. So sana ay dumami pa tayo para mag-grow pa ang ating LRC community. No? Uh, please also subscribe on YouTube. No? We are also on YouTube. And like us on Instagram para uh, we can also stay connected there and on Twitter. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, tandaan natin lahat, no? Kung ang final word ni Sir Jiker kanina, hindi hindrance ang uh, financial status, no? Para makapasok or para mag-flourish sa UPLD. Sa amin naman sa LRC, hindi ano, hin, uh, hindi uh, hadlang, no? Hindi hadlang ang iba't ibang mga balakid sa inyong pag-aaral sa pagkatuto para kayo ay mag-grow, mag-flourish. Uh, dito sa pamantasa. No? Nandito kami para sa inyo, sabi nga ng ABS-CBN, pero tayo ay together no? uh, sa ating um, pag-abot ng ating mga pangarap. Together, we can achieve academic excellence. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sir JM. Alright, so kumpleto na <laughs> lahat ng mga services na kailangan yung malaman for this morning ano ano pang hinihintay piliin na ang UP Los Baños pumasok na sa UP at sa UP Los Baños so once again thank you so much sir JM and sir Jaker we will now proceed with the questions that we have and uh, advance pong sinend ng ating mga registered participants ano so sir Jix ito po ay regarding sa scholarships um unahin ko na po yung tungkol sa DOST scholarship grant so sabi po nung isang um participant natin. If a student qualifies and is awarded a DOST scholarship grant, can the student still avail of and be a grantee of a second scholarship grant during the course of the student's stay in the university? Thank you. All right. So very grateful tayo sa changes na nangyayari sa universidad. And just this year, ka-approve lang po ng BOR yung ating uh, maximum of two scholarships and grants. So pwede kang isang DOST scholar scholarship DOS scholarship plus may isa ka pa pong scholarship or isang grants no basta hindi po lalagpas sa 15,000 na monthly stipend ang natatanggap mo kung may 7,000 ka na from DOST and you still got for example talagang coming from a very low household income ikaw ay FDS pa which means you have 5,000 monthly 7 plus 5 ay 12 so at least pasok pa po yun so uh, uh, pwede po siya approve po siya so, so maximum sir, po <laughs> So, ang maximum, sir, ay dapat total of? Two. Two scholarship and grants. Tapos yung combination nila, 15,000 lang yung cap. Oh, so, tinaas na. All right. Yes. So, Ka-approve lang po ng BOR. Ayan. So, dapat not more than 15. So, pwede ka pang humanap ng isa pang scholarship kasi talagang yung 5,000, sir, no? Sa yes. panahon ngayon, parang tubig na lang yung nagdadaan sa palad mo. <laughs> <laughs> Lalo na kung estudyante ka, ano, tapos nag-rent nag pa pa ng bahay, ganyan. But we also have dormitories anyway, na, na offer din ng OVCSA. Alright? And thank you so much, Sir Jaker, for, for that clarification at magandang balita sa ating mga future isko and iska. And then, Sir, ito pong second question is, who can avail the scholarships and financial assistance and other student support services offered by UPLB and paano daw po siguro sila mag-a-avail kapag ka pumasok na sila dito sa UP Los Baños? Okay po. So, 
definitely kapag UP student, pag uh, pasok na UPLB student, you are eligible for most, no? But for uh, freshmen po, pag mga first year students na NF at uh, pag NF new freshmen na kaisang semester pa lamang, ay hindi pa po pwede ng student assistantship. But all the rest, pwede niyo pong i-avail, no? all the rest of scholarships and grants na university po natin ay pwede. Maliban lang sa SA pag NF. Alright, so I hope that answers the question of our <laughs> participant. So, another one, sir, is do you have maintained grades in scholarship program? <laughs> and are they accepting working students? Uh, po, um, kung scholarship po siya na mayroong private donor or government donor tayo na may eligibility, like say may cut-off na 2.5 or does the GWA, that has to be the cut-off. No? May mga ganun pong eligibility na kailangang apply yan. Uh, lalo na kung UP Presidential Scholarship, yan yung UP Presidential Scholarship na kapag graduate ka, may medal ka, kahit mababa yung uh, stipend niya or allowance, ay it's an honor kasi ang taas ng GWA requirement kapag UP Presidential Scholar, which is 175 or better. No, 175 or better ang... ang requirement but for the rest naka naka assign po yan sa donor sa usapan ng donor at saka ng uh, university but for grants kagaya po nung sa SLAS na gratis po siya wala po yung grade requirement ang tanging basihan po noon ay yung vulnerability yung iyong household income yung iyong uh, uh, household characteristics all right thank you so much share ko lang din yung sa arts no sa yes, arts sir. naman meron tayong uh, maintaining doon na grade requirement. So, uh, syempre, dahil nga LRC tayo, in-aim natin yung academic excellence. Diba matter talaga yung academic performance ng mga scholars natin. So, for arts, yes, may, may na-maintain tayo na uh, grade, pero uh, mabait tayo sa LRC. No? <laughs> mabait tayo. Pinapayagan natin kapag justifiable naman din yung mga naging reason kung bakit magda-drop yung mga students no? or kung uh, marireinstate sila Uh, kapag meron silang binagsak na course. All right, So, hindi po nakatagasa ba ito? <laughs> Talagang compassionate po tayo for that sa Arts College. Thank you so much, Sir JM. And thank you so much, Sir Jaker. And then, meron pa rin po tayo dito. If you have other questions po, please feel free to comment sa ating comment section habang nandito pa po si Sir Jaker at Sir JM. Are there uh, other UP scholarships that we can apply to even though we are not part of the top 10 of the graduating class. Mm. Pertaining po kaya ito sa scholar ng Bayan program kasi kung okay. yung yung na mention kanya ni uh, ni Sir Kiko no sa admission yung uh, may automatic admission to UP kapag member ng public kailangan public yung high school mo tapos you are part of the top 10 no part ka dapat ng top 10. Um yun lamang po yung isang admission process na, na hindi kailangan mag-upcut. Pero dahil nga po, sabi ni Sir Kiko, paso na yung first five years na yon kailangan mo na mag-undergo dun sa admission process no, para makpasok yung cut-off mo at maisama ka to the scholar ng buying program. Mm -hmm. um, but for the rest, once you're a uh, UP or UPLB student na po, wala na po yung, hindi <laughs> na po kinoconsider yung kailangan top 10 ka nung high school mo kung first year ka. So, um, based na po mostly yung mga scholarship natin sa uh, G, uh, eligibility in terms of GWA or yung sa grants natin sa household income and characteristic. Alright. Thank you so much, Sir Jaker. Sobrang dami po ng scholarship opportunities. Huwag po kayong mag-alala. Titingnan nyo lang po yun sa listahan ng ating OVCSA website. At uh, talagang mamimili po kayo doon. And then apply lang po ng apply. Sir, another question is... Um, Meron daw po bang limits yung NDA or Privacy Act to the scholarship provider? Magmamatter daw po kaya ito sa kanilang applications? NDA po is yung Non-Disclosure Agreement. Ng... Okay. I think this refers to the Data Privacy Act as well po. Hmm na between yung kanya pong information na ibibigay natin. May ilan pong uh, pinifila pa na information ng uh, scholar or kahit ng mga loans man yan or student assistantship tapos nagbibigay po kayo ng consent na ipaprocess yung information ninyo doon sa doon sa specific na scholarship na yon or grants na yon so hindi po lahat ay uh, hindi naman po lahat ay ganun ka stringent in terms of uh, 
uh, of your kung ano yung mga kailangan ibigay lahat no na information about you pero yung critical lalo na po for example yung pag-declare ninyo ng inyong household income and characteristics kasi kailangan po ay talagang honest kayo at saka with uh, with excellence and honor definitely in uh, in stating that kasi yung yung pondo na ibibigay sana natin ay mas mabigay natin sa mas deserving na estudyante na yung highly vulnerable at marginalized no para pa, in terms of your information no, or data then for scholarships po um um ang usually yung information na to ay between OSG at saka sa donor lang and we make sure we protect your information at hindi po ito basta-basta nahihingi no unless mayroong official po request from a third party yung information all right thank you so much sir Jaker sir JM i think my question po tayo sa FB live would you um care po to answer the question of JM Deloria. Siguro po napansin niya po na madami tayong DevCom dito. <laughs> madami po tayong mga DevCom graduates. Ay, ako po si Sir, si Josh, si uh, Sir Chico, ayan. And even the wife of Sir Kiko, dating DevCom din po, sabi niya po, ano pong job opportunities ng isang DevCom grad? Ako, marami. Una na dyan, may giging director ka ng Office of Public Relations, di ba, Sir Chico? <laughs> pwede, pwede maging director ng OPR. Hindi po, uh, marami po. No? Actually, ang DevCom din ay Center of Excellence. Twice na po tayo na-awardan as a Center of Excellence. At uh, tayo din po ay uh, recognized not only in the Philippines but also in Asia. No? As a matter of fact, ang um, development communication... Uh, Tayo po ang nag-give birth ng development communication all over the world. Kiniklaim po natin yan. Dahil yung term na development communication, siya po ay na-conceive, siya po ay inarticulate dito mismo sa UP Los Banos. No? At tayo lang po yung kauna-unahang school or college na nag-offer ng Bachelor of Science and Development Communication, Master of Science and Development Communication, and Doctor of Philosophy and Development Communication in the Philippines. No? So to answer the question, marami po nag tayo ng mga opportunities sa inyo and testament po ako si Ate She, si Josh si uh, Sir Chico na nandito ngayon sa, sa venue, kahit si Sir Jeker kasi parang honorary <laughs> na mag si Sir Jeker no? ayan, a testament po kami na marami po kayo madadevelop ng mga skills no? at marami po kayo mararating na iba't ibang mga uh, opportunities opportunity sa trabaho. Pwede po kayong maging reporter, pwede kayong maging journalist, pwede kayong maging educator like myself, pwede kayong mag-work sa isang NGO, or pwede rin kayong mag-work sa government office, pwede kayong maging ambassador, pwede kayong maging owner ng isang small medium enterprise. All around po ang work ng DevCom. Hindi, pwede kayong maging lawyer, exactly. No? Marami po tayong mga uh, DevCom graduates na nag-flourish ngayon sa field ng law. No? Napakarami pong uh, pwede pong opportunities na magiintay sa inyo. So, da, siguro dapat isama na rin natin no, ang DevCom <laughs> sa future RPBB uh, projects natin. Pero yon welcome na welcome po kayo to include DevCom uh, in your uh, course of choice kapag nag-fill out kayo ng, uh, for UP College Admission. All right, Thank you so much, Sir J.M. I guess what we'll be asking po ay yung inyong final message po sa ating mga hindi bumibitaw na mga listeners na nasa FB Live pa rin po. Siguro Sir JM po muna and then si Sir Jaker po. Sir JM, final message po? Ang um, final message ko ay ano, be patient no? but also be wise. No? Um, alam ko na napagdaanan din po namin yan pero nung time namin ay upkat no? Uh, pero kasi nung upkat namin ay inaabot kami ng from fourth year high school until uh, the result of upkat to wait kung ano nga ba yung destiny na nag await sa amin. I think sa inyo pwede siyang shorter in a sense na kasi parang kagaya ng sinabi ni Sir Kiko kanina eh, uh, your grades have already been settled. They're officially part of the past. So ang iintayin nyo na lang ay if your uh, requirements and if your submissions met no yung hini, uh, hinihingi sa atin ng upka uh, pero kapag nagiintay tayo no um, trust in the process kailangan pagkatiwalaan natin na 
uh, kung hindi man ito uh, pinagkaloob sa atin ng kapalaran o ng Diyos, no? maraming mga paraan na naghihintay sa atin para tayo ay makapasok sa UP o para tayo ay makatuntong sa UP. At kagaya nung sinabi namin ni Sir G. Kerr kanina, no? Actually, napakarami pa ng mga student services na nag-iintay sa inyo dito. No, kagaya ng sinabi ni Sir Jaker, nandiyan yung housing, dito yung dormitories, nandito yung counseling and guidance. Kung international student kayo, no, if, if there's any international student listening to us, we also have uh, a unit uh, that would address all your needs and concerns. If you want to be part of an organization, we have the Office of Student Activities. Marami po, no? marami nag-iintay sa atin na mga student services dito. So, ang final message ko ay ipaglaban nyo ang UP. Dahil ngayon pa lang, ngayon pa lang, na hindi pa kayo nakapasok sa UP, naghihintay pa lang kayo, pinaglalaban na kayo ng UP. At itong, itong uh, nowhere to go but up, this is one of our ways of reaching out to you. of telling you na even before hindi pa kayo nakakapasok sa UP, nandito na kami para sa inyo. At ready kaming tulungan kayo every step of the way hanggang sa makapasok kayo, hanggang sa makagraduate kayo with honor, at hanggang sa makahanap kayo ng trabaho. Hanggang sa balikan nyo ang UPLD as a successful alumnus or alumna in the future. Thank you, Sir JM, for those wonderful words. Sir Jix? Um, siguro for the closing, um... Una, uh, thank you very much po sa time noon nung ating natitirang 50 million viewers. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, it's UP. Yes, it's UP. Pero again, if hindi siya para sa inyo, it's not the end all and be all of everything. You are not defined whether you are you, you make it to UP or not. Pag nakapasok kayo sa UP, we're very happy. Kung hindi, we are very happy. But basta po at mulit muli at sa huli no para sa para sa ating lahat UP man o hindi pagsilbihan po natin ang sambayanan so maraming maraming salamat po thank you so much sir Jigger there you have it assistant professor um professor Jiggerson Pilado and assistant professor John Mervin L M Bate now team LRC would like to take this opportunity to thank our speakers for their valuable time So to award the Certificate of Appreciation, may I kindly recognize once again our officer in charge and incoming LRC Director Assistant Professor John Mervin Mbate. Let me just quickly read the citations first. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Jickerson Pilado for serving as resource speaker during the fourth session on Better Together, UPLB Scholarships, Financial Assistance, and Other Services, In the Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0 webinar series, UPLB Recruitment Program for the Best and the Brightest Students held today, 24 November 2021 at the Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Osbanos, College, Laguna, signed by our incoming director, John Mervin L. Mbate. And the same certificate goes to John Mervin L. Mbate for serving as resource speaker on our fourth session on Better Together, UPLB Scholarships, Financial Assistance, and Other Services. In the Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0 webinar series, UPLB Recruitment Program for the Best and the Brightest Students held today, November 24, 2021 at LRC UPLB College Laguna, signed by our Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Janet H. Malata Silva. Sir JM? Thank you very much, Pastor Jeker, and to all our speakers for today. No, I think this is a reminder for all of us no, uh, na iba ang alagang UPLP. At hindi na kami makapaghintay na aalagaan namin kayo bilang bahagi ng UPLB community. Maraming salamat po. Alright, so thank you so much for JM and to all our speakers for this morning. Now for the evaluation of this session. Medyo nag-overtime po tayo ng kaunti, no? pero talaga namang napaka-produktibo po ng ating araw sa ng ating araw. Please answer the evaluation form after the webinar to receive your e-certificate of participation. Your comments and suggestions will be deeply appreciated by our team. Hashtag Team LRC. The link will be up until 1 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, November 25, 2021. And the evaluation link is also being shown on your screen. Pwede nyo na po yung screenshot or i- um, uh, scan po yung QR code para diretsyo na po kayong makapunta sa ating evaluation link. And reminder for our next session, last but definitely not the least session, that would be on Friday, November 26, 2021. Same time po tayo, 9 in the morning. If you haven't registered yet, please do so. Take advantage of all of these uh, sessions po para maging handa po kayo yung maging future isko at iska. All right? And 
that would be sessions on up close and keep it up. Shout out din po sa mga taga Santa Rosa Science and Technology High School. Madami po sila kanina na nakatutok sa atin. And of course, sa aking husband and kay CJ, hindi ko daw siya binate. Happy watching, anak. Now, we would like to recognize and thank our team, hashtag Team LRC and hashtag Team RPBB, nowhere to go but up with the support of our Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Dr. Janet H. Malata Silva, headed by our incoming director, Sir J.M. Embate. On our technical side is our University Research Associate, Joshua Michael J. Jonas, and our webinar production online director, Direct Prof. Mark Lester M. Chico. A big thank you once again to our generous speakers for this morning, Sir Kiko, Ma'am Marge, ABC Jeker, and Sir JM. And thank you so much as well to our Team LRC's two other members, Tita Allen and Kuya Iwo. That's it for today, guys. That concludes our day two of the Nowhere to Go But Up 2.0 webinar series. This has been your moderator, Cheryl Ed Hermosa Ebron. To end, allow me to leave you with this quote inspired by Sir Kiko's message a while ago from The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. When you want something, the whole universe conspires in order for you to achieve it. UP, QT, claim it and manifest it. Thank you so much, future scholar ng bayan, for tuning in. Kapit lamang po at laban lang tayo araw-araw. Stay strong, stay healthy, and stay happy. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.